Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I'm your host, Chris Spangle. We Are Libertarians brings you all of the irreverence modern politics deserves, and boy does it. Think of us as the love child of National Review and Mad Magazine. We explain to you what the hell is happening in our world today and how we can fix it by thinking differently. Please be sure to rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, share this episode with friends, and support us through PayPal or Patreon at wearelibertarians.com. We are supported by listeners like you, so $1 per episode by pledging $5 a month helps us grow. We are always taking your questions and comments via email at editor at wearelibertarians.com. If you uh, need life advice from Dear Leader or the many successes of the We Are Libertarians cast, please send us an email, a political question, romance question, whatever, hog feeding question. We've got, we've got experts on that, too. If you are new to the program, we catch up for the first 20 minutes or so, then deep dive into analyzing current events in society from a libertarian perspective. This show is for adults, by semi-adults, so please be warned the language is strong and offensive. With us is, as always, Greg Lenz. Greg, how are you doing? I'm doing well, buddy. How are you feeling after your uh, reconciliation with the one and only Rob Kendall? It's been uh, it's been an up and down uh, 24 hours. If you haven't listened to yesterday's show, uh, then you heard that Rob and I have have come together. I felt he was very insulting, though. Did you? Did Did you not? I felt that it went as well as it possibly could have. I felt that he he was very uh, insulting. Jeremiah Morrill, you're with us as well. Dear leader, hello. Have you caught up uh, with that? I did. I, I listened to it today. Did you? I didn't do show prep. I listened to you and Rob. Okay. Did you feel that <laughs> I thought Rob... the apology was more important than Greg's uh, Greg's notes? Did you feel that it was a good apology? Uh, I think you both met as close to halfway as you could. All right. And, and still walking out with uh, without being too ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> Harry Price is with us as well. Harry, how are you? Going good, going good. Hanging out with Gunther mostly today. Yeah? How's that going? That's going good. Uh, yeah, I did do some show prep watching videos, but mostly I was um, hanging out with uh, hanging out with my daughter. She's finally one month old. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank 4. you. 4.8 pounds now? Uh, 4.9, 4.9, actually. yeah. Yeah, it's that, all that Filipino breast milk I've been feeding her. Um, <laughs> well, that's the best kind. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Duarte breast milk. Yeah, it's and oh. it's that good, it's the chunky side of Filipino, not that really skinny yeah. side of Filipino. Yeah, the good genes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the good stuff. Uh, she's going to have to check that box on the c- census for that Pacific <laughs> Islander. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting all the scholarships. Also with us is Kat Anagnos. Kat, how are you? Hello, I'm great. How are you? Uh, out, and finally a woman. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, it's... Uh, <clears throat> It's been great, honestly. Uh, I've gotten a lot of attention, which I love. Um, <laughs> so much that Dear Leader prepared a meal for me today. Yes. I um, see that you're hiding it below camera level, though. You won't put the meal on the table. You're keeping it down and out of sight. Mahi-mahi right. mahi and sweet potato. How is the sweet potato? Well, here's the thing. It's all delicious, and I am so happy that I have a wonderful leader to provide for me that I do. But Sustenance. The, the problem <laughs> is it's so much food. Yeah. Like, usually in communist countries. Well, you don't have to lick the plate. <laughs> well, well, usually in communist countries, you know, they um, don't have food. That's true. Um, but in this very this bountiful, is a, this is a freedom country, right? Not communist. So I've I've been the sweet potato was about as big as my face, delicious. <laughs> it literally was, yeah. And three large pieces of fish, white um, fish only. Right. No, yes. it, was, it was cod, and then one. Uh, I gave her the cod, and I took the mahi mahi. But I generously gave her a piece of the mahi mahi. I took a piece of the cod. Uh, she so she got three big pieces of fish, Cat, all scaleless. You really gave her some here. premium food. It's still here. <laughs> she started with the lesser fish first. Um, I need to. Te- I'm teaching Cat. She is uh, my intern at the day job. She's an intern here. We spend way too much time together. I'm teaching her a lot about life. Mm-hmm. Uh, today I taught her about fitness. Uh, we went to the gym. Yeah, I taught her how to lift weights, and uh, then I made her drink a protein shake, too. Uh, wait, are you bringing her so that you have a full-time Chris Fit camera person? Yes. Is that what this was? <laughs> yes. It's a reality well, he, show for Chris he, Fit Extreme. I was a little confused because I thought it was about um, bettering my health, but he gave me a camcorder at one point. You were given a camcorder and some lighting and to make this <laughs> right. look good? Run along, hun. Light. Chop, chop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, once I started, like... Hanging up all the lights and the curtains, I was a little in the confused. LA fitness. Right. <laughs> I was a bit confused, but um, yeah, dear leaders provided for me. Um, I might throw up, especially if we keep talking about Filipino breast milk. <laughs> so if you want to see, uh, racist. An, I know. Right? Well, let's be real. No, I'm kidding. She prefers but, uh, yeah. United Kingdom breast milk. Exactly. Oh, mm, sorry. Yes, yeah. but yeah. if you'd like to see um three large pieces of fish thrown up. Then, uh, keep talking. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, Cat Cat has been a lot of fun to to hang out. She's twenty, so she's she's young. She's very 
innocent. Let's say let's say innocent. Would you say innocent? Um, naive. <laughs> Stupid because I'm a woman? Yes. No, I didn't say <laughs> okay. that. Um, Just not worldly. No. Yeah, not at all. This is the first time she's actually sat within three feet of a black person. Mm. She chose to go to Ball State for the big city life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm Funcy. a Muncie 10. Funcy. Funcy. And they're <laughs> formerly the uh, Green Street, was it the Green Street pub that had the crab raising? Yeah. Well, it's my all favorite on thing, That's Kim all you Kraft, have to remember. Uh, my Kraft favorite part of Muncie favorite. is um, in the village, which for those who have never been to college, it is the um, town area outside of campus. One my stoplight. Favorite th- right, right. Mm. And uh, my favorite thing is how there's potholes everywhere because it's <laughs> Muncie. And so um, people who are drunk on the weekends will pour their liquor into these potholes and drink it with a straw. <laughs> <Gross>. <laughs> yeah. It's a block party. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... Well, it's classy. Mm-hmm. High five. Boom. All right. So uh, we, we have invited uh, all the participants of tonight's part. Uh, we're, we're, par- we're at Saturday night's party. Now, we had a party. If you listen to the Boss Hog of Liberty hosted by Jeremiah Morrell. Yes, sir. And my you, son, Dakota Davis. You you, uh, you heard that there was a party on Saturday night. <laughs> Sorry, I was just effing with cat. Uh there was a party coming up. You heard the preview. It was hosted by Jeremiah Morrill at his palatial estates, which is really inconvenient for everybody but mm-hmm. Jeremiah because we invite so many people. Everybody has the best time, but everybody leading up, like, I'm not driving an hour. It's to like get a there. retreat, okay? It's right. a retreat. You guys, you go there, you're not going to be distracted. Mm-hmm. There is nothing else going on. Once you arrive, you park your car. And you have a great time. No, I felt totally alone. So, and, <laughs> and it's close to Cat because she lives over there. Yeah, she's twenty minutes. It away. It was great. Like the drive from Muncie to this party <laughs> is the best drive all year. Yeah, because I drive an hour and a half to get here. But anyways, all right. I made well, Lacey. I made Lacey drive out. So forty-five I, minutes door to door from Spangle's house to my house. Yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that it's bad. Not. Yeah, I napped the entire time. It was great. I made Lacey drive. It was awesome. I recommend having someone else drive for you. It's like a reverse Miss Daisy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think Rob Kendall is the only one that really had any difficulty at all, and that was just because it was a kidnapping situation. <laughs> that totally was, which is kind of brilliant. But I think she she had a good time for her first taste of weaponized autism. Did we cover that on the podcast? Yeah, okay. we did. Because I did. never know what we talk about on the air. But uh, no, that, we talk negative about everybody off the air, so yeah. we don't right, put that out. Yeah. Got a few bones to pick. <laughs> Got to be honest. Uh oh, it was a great party. You're welcome. But I'm very disappointed in uh, Jeremiah Morrill. <laughs> Why is that? Now, Jer, now you have heard. I have water in my hand right I now. I know. So, yeah. <laughs> now, Jeremiah, uh, you have been summoned to We Are Libertarians tonight to answer for your crimes against the Empire. Yes, dear. <laughs> um, but uh, an apology is owed. An apology was declared on yesterday's podcast. Was it, was it not? It was. Even Rob Kendall thought this was a good apology, uh, a necessary apology. Uh, Are we talking about Brett and the apology he owes me? Is that is that the apology we're talking no, about? No, that's a separate apology. There's, there's many apologies. There's a right lot now. of apologies. There's a lot of trained. apologies owed. If you're involved in We Are Libertarians, trust me, you're used to apologizing, right, Greg? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I yeah. That's a constant state. <laughs> there was there was one. Point. You post one meme of Harry with a fedora on, and the mm-hmm. next thing you know is mom's re- calling you a clan member. You did oh, yeah. you did put the N word in that meme, and then it, on Facebook. So well, it was a soft day, and I contend that that isn't the N word. <laughs> uh, so My. we were we were in the she pool. She still brings that up, by the way. We were in the pool at one point, and uh, we were all having a conversation. And then somebody said something to Greg. I think it might have been you. Yeah. And then there was like just an awkward silence. And they go, "Why didn't you say something?" And and <laughs> Greg, they go, "I was just waiting for Greg to apologize." <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? I don't remember, but it was so funny. Oh God! Uh, uh, it was a great party. It was, I was so, probably Grace. It was so oh. much fun, yeah. And uh, but you know, the the de evolution of Jeremiah Morrill continues, Greg. You are quite the deviant these days. You, you. I don't know what happened to you. You were like an upstanding member of society, Christian you know, boy, thought well of by all your, uh, you know, Eastern Empire uh, libertarian. I might have watched Old School before we, this party happened, and I wanted to be Frank the Tank. J- yeah, <laughs> thanks, thanks to Joe Ruiz, Pastor Joe, who gets in the uh, chat the next morning, and goes, "You all realize you're in your 30s, right? It's <laughs> getting a little sad." I said, "You know what? Why don't you get back to Puerto Rico and Boom, you know baby, what? pay your bills?" He, he did. He's yeah. back in Puerto Rico right now, having a great time. Um, oh, is he really? He is. He's in Puerto Rico right now with his family. Oh, wow. Buying cheap property. He's self-deported. <laughs> he self Take that, Jeff. I know. Now, uh, 
but the the de-evolution of Jeremiah Morrill continues. It's really something. And uh, J- Jerry, you were as drunk as I've ever seen anyone. <laughs> oh well, let alone you, you haven't been out enough. Listen, I go to college, one of the m- biggest party schools in the Midwest, and I have <laughs> I, never Ivy Tech seen, Northeast. <laughs> yeah. Ivy Tech, no, right? I have never seen somebody that hammered in my life. <laughs> Are you serious? No, I mean, yes, the, you're serious. Well, okay. The people that I see are ha- that are hammered. Commit um, to the joke, cat. <laughs> I don't know. Cat, are they not? Are they not functional like I am? They, they're not. Uh, they're not still standing What's, and, and like carrying They're on. about to like go to the hospital. Whereas <laughs> you like look like you could still function, but I knew like the next morning. The lights I, were on, but nobody I was home. I wrestled a man. I did fine. <laughs> you, you it was an act of fratricide. Like you actually tried to kill a, your own brother. You. He, he tried mm-hmm. to leave the party, and it wasn't time yet, Greg. That's true. <laughs> you, so, so you helped. It was not well. Quentin time. Then Every, why did you let me <laughs> leave? Because you didn't say goodbye, uh, oh, and I don't true. think he was that drunk yet. He he it really accelerated when Greg, I, when it, we did three we, shots in a row, right. we were poisoned by some pickles. It was we were outside having a good time. We got out of the pool because we had just ce- we were celebrating. We had I think we had just defeated Harry and pool yeah. Basketball. Greg and I had a uh, w- Greg and I beat uh, Dakota and uh, Dakota and Davis, my co-host. <laughs> Harry. And uh, and Harry, the IT guy. Yep. Harry, we'll get to Harry in the pool in a second. <laughs> yeah, but so then we decided we needed to go in and celebrate, and so Jeremiah is like, "Let's do pickleback," which is a shot of Jameson Irish whiskey, and then pickle as a uh, as a chaser. Then it was like, well, Sarah made all these jello shots. Jeremiah's girlfriend might as well do a jello shot. <laughs> then Jer, all of a sudden, it was like somebody called in Rick Vaughn in the movie Major <laughs> League out of the bullpen. Like he came in ready to throw heat and goes. It's time for an Irish car bomb. And so out came the Guinness, and then we dropped a shot of Jameson Irish whiskey into a half glass of yeah. Guinness. Jameson and Bailey's in the Guinness, and yeah. you got to drink it quick. And we you chug cannot it. quit on that drink. It's delicious. you got to go instantaneously. Greg beat me by about a quarter second. I went yeah. back and watched I didn't the video. Look. I Greg was... beat me by a touch, and Dakota still needs some more practice. If you want to see mm. the highlights uh, from the Snapchat, uh, the Snapchat was all the buzz that night. Uh, we, the letter R, Libertarians, we are Libertarians if you want to add us. But the Snapchat video recap and the video of the Irish car bomb, amongst many other things like Harry and Creighton fighting like two alphas, uh, th- and uh, Creighton jumping off the roof roof with a backflip, it's in the We Are Libertarians <laughs> Facebook group, which you can get to at wearelibertarians.com. The, the best part is my dog in all of these videos, watching everything, going, what are you people so doing? Judging. Just yeah. judging. Same yes. with your girlfriend. <laughs> God loves Sarah, but she after there, the Irish car bomb, she turned into a total... Second grade teacher. It was done. Yeah. Yeah. See, my favorite part was was it you? Was your mom there, Jeremiah? Yeah. Yes. My mom was there. Yeah. Joyce and yeah, Paul. Yeah. I went up to her because somebody was very intoxicated. I think it was Creighton. Was like, oh, I'm gonna jump off the roof. So he starts like climbing up there, and your mom was like, oh no, honey. And I thought like she was being a, a mother. Um, she was like, no, you ha- you have to go the back way <laughs> to get up. <laughs> and like, oh, and I was like, are you the um the what is it the, the chaperone? chaperone? And she was like. Oh God, no! Oh no, she parties. Yeah, no, she was she, uh, turned. As Kat, she had a good say. time. Cat is so young, so innocent. Genuinely asked Joyce if she was the chaperone, and the fa- Joyce's face. She was just like, "Oh, I didn't want to be old." <laughs> <laughs> well, because she kept like bragging about like you must be a great son because she kept bragging about how. You know, she's the mom of the party. So I was like, oh, you're the chaperone? She's like, oh, God, no. Get up she, on the roof, Creighton. She's like, the We Are Libertarians house mom, the wall, the wall for it. I'm glad, I'm glad my parents and Sarah's parents stayed as long as they did because I think the night would have ended a lot faster if they hadn't been there to be the governor. I think I, to, to slow us down I a looked little at, bit. I looked at you. I think it was you, Jared. And I said, well, now that they're leaving, it's going to get fun <laughs> because the party really didn't hit 11 until they they left and you really turned it up to 11 and so uh, all of a sudden i come out from the pool into the kitchen and jerry is just standing there with a big shit eating grin on his face <laughs> yeah he and, was. and at this point everybody who tried to leave it was like they were committing jihad in the middle of his <laughs> living room i will take personal <laughs> offense to this they, he was like no oh, man he was uh, at, at the day job there is a great impression that chick mcgee does you think you're too good to drink with me? <laughs> that was true. What do you mean you're leaving the party? You're going to leave the party? Party ain't even started yet. <laughs> if, I, uh, if I had the wherewithal, I would have been flattening tires to keep people it, there. Well, yeah. you, were, you were genuinely hurt when your brother tried to leave at like 12.30 a.m. But he is, couldn't have been trying to leave because his girlfriend hadn't even gotten there yet. 
No, she was there. She was, was she was hiding. Was in the there? Room. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All night, and so it was like twelve thirty one a.m. And he's like, "You're not leaving the party. The party is just started." And it was actually true because then all of a sudden, <laughs> then it turned into a signing party. Like we were all of a sudden, yeah. Everyone wanted Everybody's to be branded. An Everybody wanted everything signed, and then uh, mm-hmm. Jared just goes, "You know what, Danny? You're not leaving. It's time for you. <laughs> you need a drink." Drink, Danny! And you grab him, you wrap your arms around his head, you somehow get the leverage to... <laughs> it's not the first time I've had my baby brother in a headlock. Grab, you had him. Yeah. <laughs> grab his nose, grab yeah. his chin, and start forcing his mouth open. And I don't think there was a plan on getting alcohol. I had this. an assistant. I went back and checked the tape. I had an assistant. Who was the assistant? Eric. Eric, Eric Lee. Lee. Was sweet, yeah. sweet, well, sweet. Johnny on the spot with the vodka. Loving Eric Lee. Who loves so hard? <laughs> no one loves harder than Eric Lee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but uh, Did I say too. You better make it. <laughs> and so, yeah. And so, <laughs> you just need a drink. And like I look, I at first my I take out my phone and I Snapchat this, so you can see it in the video. Well, thank God you did. Of course. And everybody whips out their phone. It's nothing but Jer manhandling his little brother while everybody's videotaping. Which Danny noted after this all was over, he goes, "None of you helped me. Your accomplices. <laughs> <laughs> all you did was videotape it." And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, like I, I go, "Okay, Danny's starting to really get hurt." And Danny, you can see, like all fun and games, but Danny was about thirty seconds from it not being fun and games. And you had knocked his beer off while he, like, <laughs> because you had him like like a rag doll, and his arms are failing. He knocked his Modelo right off the end of your counter onto the floor. And so mm. I go, I think you know, listen. Cat, you've seen me work out. Mm-hmm. I lift a lot of weight, don't I? Yeah. I'm very buff. I'm a high performance athlete, as you all know. <laughs> so I think I'm going to boss hog my way in there and break this up. Jeremiah has the strength of a retarded bear. <laughs> <laughs> a, a grizzly bear with Down syndrome. Okay? That has, like, he's. <laughs> Baby Ruth! You got a drink! You got a drink! So. So and the great part is he's unaware of this while he's doing it. <laughs> it's all it's all it's all uh, talent, really. You, you talent and instinct. That's you right. No Primal. memory of this, do you? Uh, some limited. And so limited. I, I go, I'm gonna need a little help. Uh. <laughs> and we start breaking it up. It takes four of us to break it up, including Sarah. And I'm just like. Sarah, do not get in the middle. The last thing that we need is Jer accidentally elbowing you right in the head, and then the, the, this then it's is a own. domestic issue. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad y'all didn't tase me. This is more. why women don't belong in the military, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, it was like the scene in uh, oh, and uh, oh god, it's the Zach Galifianakis scene where he gets tased. And, oh. uh, oh, yeah. and like, yeah. the hangover. Like, yeah, the hangover. Yeah. He gets tased, yes. and he just keeps storming <laughs> toward the <laughs> car. So we finally, like Frankenstein. We finally get him clear and then jared just is couldn't be prouder of himself <laughs> no you had the most self-satisfied grin on your face <laughs> he's so proud of himself it's so funny and so he's just standing there with this shitty grin and i'm just like all right and so i go back outside for a second and i'm like you know what i'm gonna start a facebook live and so in the group you can now facebook live to a group and so in the we are libertarians the uh, most glorious empire the most glorious right. empire of we are libertarians facebook group uh, you can now Facebook Live. So I started up a Facebook Live, which turned out to be a huge mistake for huge. several reasons. Uh, first, <laughs> we'd like to make a formal apology to Harry for things that Tad Western I, said. I was not the most offensive or out of line in this video. <laughs> we, we're going to need to. I really felt better about myself Sunday morning after watching this. We're really going to need to make a double payment this month <laughs> yeah. on the racism insurance thing. It's like we got a, a racist DUI charge, and so now our insurance premiums are going right. to skyrocket. Uh, so. And that was the next board. I was like, hey, do you guys see this video? <laughs> um, I wish you hadn't tagged my mother. I was just like, Apparently, it was the music that was playing. I was like, Hey, we good dog? It wasn't Tad's fault. It was the music. He was just singing along to the rap lyrics. Uh Uh, And, uh,. (laughs) Radio edit. <laughs> so, uh, so then I, I'm like, well, I can't put the camera on. And then I, so I pan over and I put it on Bittner and his girlfriend, 20 year old, sweet, sweet Morgan. I was who, told she was 21. 21. She had a wristband on. Oh, so she's, she's 21. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, she she's 20. Wristband. I have no idea what she is. I've met her once before. She's definitely like 23 or 24. She's, no, she's 21. She oh. is. Um, she graduated from Ball State. Yeah, technically that's right. In like three years. She's. Um, yeah. She's a real piece of work. She was a lot of fun. 
Uh, I don't get the whole Bittner thing because I'm never Bittner, so I don't understand how a girl that looks like that can be pro Bittner. Uh, but she said he's cute, and hey, more power to Bittner. We're all happy for you, bro. Shitty driver, but very cute. Y- you can go. You can go see the photos and some of the videos. You can see Morgan on the uh, We Are Libertarians Instagram if you want to see. But uh, you know, in a bikini, looking great. I was like, all right, this will be great web content. But then she starts making out with Bittner, and I'm like, I can't have that on a live stream. No. Listen, no matter how cute she is, it's Bittner have, like, making out with somebody, and nobody yeah. wants that. Surprised he didn't offer you some cash to keep the camera on him. Yeah. Have, He's the, like, have the footage. Hey, everybody, look. <laughs> yeah, that part, he, like, brought me back to do the lighting again. Right. Like, this is weird. Right. Uh, <laughs> never mind. And so, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go inside. And so I walk inside, and there's the group standing in the kitchen. And there's Jer. You can see as I walk up Jer's face. He's still it's my ha- I have an idea face. It's ha- he has an idea. <laughs> your grin didn't leave your face for a solid hour, and you had no idea how much trouble you were in. You, I just kept. I watching. was in no trouble. But I know. Well, like, you think we, I'm in trouble? We no, thought you I, were in trouble. I th- you played it right. The next morning is what you did. Is you <laughs> faked like how much sick you were, so that she wouldn't just tear your head off. But that was a wise decision. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, we're standing there, and I turn the camera around to start talking to Danny, and next thing I know. <laughs> I'm wet. Yeah. Well, you were baptized in freedom. I wasn't. <laughs> it, it started raining in my living room. Now, in, my, in my dining room. Cat, as you know, I'm a man, so it wasn't a good wetness. I have never been sexually harassed by We Are Libertarians. <laughs> Stop reading off your hand, Cat. Sorry. <laughs> so I, I, all of a sudden, she can read. He took tw- a 12 ounce bottle of water opened it and dumped it on my head on a live stream. Someone had given you that to calm down, too. Like, so you didn't grab a beer? And he, I think that had to be part of it. You were so offended someone would give Here's, you water was at your own party. a victory celebration. Here's, I had just beaten Harry in basketball. Yeah. Here, here is how apologetic Jer is. When I just said that, he pursed his lips, shrugged his shoulders, and got a smile on his face. was like, yeah, I, it was, I it, did that. And like, uh, who was it? Cause Eric, was it Eric Lee that was like, how mad is Spangle right now? And I go, he's not mad. He's very annoyed. <laughs> very annoyed. Very like annoyed. he's not gonna get mad and like get pissy about this, but he is very annoyed. <laughs> I I have a very Thank God I missed the camera or the phone. I was so pissed that we didn't get it on camera. And at one point during all of his drunken shenanigans, Greg, I never should have given him a podcast. No. Because at one point he did something stupidly and drunkenly, and then somebody said, Jer, don't do that. And he goes, Content! <laughs> I go, content is not an excuse to be an asshole. Oh. <laughs> but it apparently is. I w- but to that vein, I wish that I had gotten me getting dumped up. There is the aftermath, and then the camera goes to Greg, and Greg's face is just like, what is Spangle going to do? Oh, I, well, I mean, because you had ju- you'd been trying to like you were going to leave because you were driving home. This right. is a good time and to so, plug the Boss Hog Liberty podcast because we did cover this on last night's episode, episode yeah. ten. Tune in coming, for that. coming soon. It's like a funny subscribe. podcast, outstanding, growing by the ex- growing ex- exponentially. I we're think. doing very well. None yes. of us can believe it's got yeah. five hundred listeners. So we need we need to. It, it, Tad is at a thousand. We checked the numbers. We couldn't believe how our satellite podcast, how well they're doing. And thank you guys so much for supporting those other. Just go to iTunes. And search for We Are Libertarians or go to wearelibertarians.com and you can see all the other uh, shows. But Greg's face was I, – I, I was trying to leave, and I have a very strong p- sense of personal space, and I do not like – thank you, Kat. Mm-hmm. I do not like – so, uh, you're not allowed to sexually harass him. Kat. Right. You I have touch never been. Se- Sorry, I'm just triggered by the word. <laughs> I do the sexually harassing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have never. Uh, I don't like people in my space. If I am dressed, I do not want to be wet. <laughs> well, you're trying to leave too, and right. you know it's hour drive back, and like if, you just got out of the pool. I get it insanely irritated if like someone's wearing perfume and it gets on my clothes and I smell it. Like it's just it. I'm I may be autistic in that it, way. It's great that I chose Spangle. I didn't choose any other party guys. I, I chose Spangle during the Facebook Live. And it was the very last thing you did before you got sat in a chair I was that, put in and the out. lights went. And you, you sat in that chair, happy as shit with yourself, not talking to anybody, just grinning and looking <laughs> around. And then it was like, all right. So I immediately like, closed down the Facebook Live a couple minutes after that. And, uh, and then you I closed l- the Facebook Live after Tad. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then I look at Sarah, and I'm just like, now I'm on her team. Because <laughs> it's gotten out of control. Because he has the judgment of... Uh, 
an infantile person who is dumping water on my head. <laughs> now it's a me problem. Now it's a me problem, and I am affected. So we can't have anyone else being harmed with water. Yes, at, at the pool at, party. At the pool party. <laughs> How <laughs> fucking dare you? <laughs> and so, so I, I, we, we, lure, Sarah and I lure the bear into his living room from the from the kitchen, and we try to push him into the chair, and he's like, "Oh fuck you!" <laughs> <laughs> Party yet? Turn the music. Get off of her, Brett. Ah! <laughs> you're, you're living it up. Live commentary of his own party <laughs> shit face. So I, I look over and I start to get. I get a couple of guys to help. It takes three or four of us to push Jer into the chair. He's not going down. A series of ropes and pulleys to put <laughs> me down. It was, like, it was like when they have to hose an elephant off at the, and they get him into the shower. So we're like, all of us were just, because he was fighting us. So we finally get him in the chair. He falls, he plops down in the chair. And he sits there and he goes, and he looks around, he looks to his left, he looks smiling. to his right, smiling, and then he just goes... <laughs> <laughs> well, then he, I was there when Sarah got him upstairs, and it was the first time he kind of came back. Like he had had came back from the dead. And she goes, I think it's time for you to go to bed. And Jeremiah <laughs> stands up and goes, I think that's a good idea. And then you finally went upstairs and went to bed. Uh, it was it was epic. It, Jeremiah's back to back heaters. I mean, he uh, the first party you weren't, the Christmas party you were very well behaved. Mm -hmm. um, it's the water getting me outside and the jello shots. The jello, it, it's I, I can see why Bill Cosby got in trouble oh. with putting pots in jello shots. I can see why it was a problem. Next thing you Thank know, you for listening to We Are Libertarian. That's no. right. <laughs> Jeremiah asked me multiple times to sit on the couch and asked me how much I wanted to be on the podcast. <laughs> uh, I just can't hire a pretty face. <laughs> you got to earn it. Uh, well, I got engaged about four different times at this point. At this party. It was so funny to see sweet little Cat and Agnos walk around. You know, and Cat's a very cute girl, but she's very new to the world. Mm -hmm. And She's a lot like Eddie Murphy in Coming to America. And so <laughs> yes. it, it's funny to see all these guys flirt with her. And she's like, we're best friends. And I'm like, yeah. no, they're predators, honey. They're trying to, like, create. This is a shark attack. Uh, Clayton. Explain why you. Clayton, yes, Clayton. Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to you, Harry. But uh, explain why you stole my towel. I can't say that. <laughs> I cannot. I don't know anything about this. She really? was just being hunted, and so she was like, "I need a towel." <laughs> yeah. She put a burka on like she was in Syria. <laughs> I, well, she was be. There was one person who was drunk and thought she was cute and was talking to her, and she's like, "Is he flirting with me?" I was like, "Oh, he's definitely flirting with you." And then she was like, "Ew, okay." And then later on, Ew, like, boys. I see her Icky. like I see her like touching him and giving him a hug. And I go, get over here. If you don't want him to, to do that anymore, don't touch him. What are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm just being friendly. He asked for a hug. <laughs> <laughs> right. Of course he did. Well, here's the thing. I was swimming, and um, it was still light out because it was before all of that happened. And um, I left my towel in my car, and all of a sudden, like, these predatorial men were just, like, staring at me across the way. And I had already said, like, you wore a one piece. I don't know what else you could have I done. I didn't wear a one no, piece. No, she's wearing two. I wore two. Oh, I'm sorry, Greg wore a one piece. That right, was a right, burka. Right. Well, I wore a bonnet. <laughs> but um <laughs> Yeah, bonnet. so I start to like get out of the water and I just see them all like glance up. And I was like, Chris, oh, can no. I borrow your towel? He's like dun. why? Just dun, just dun. use yours. And I was like, Yeah, it's fine. And I like <laughs> she just pop out of the water and like, put everything on. I like at one point I was like still in the water and I put the towel around me, like over my head. Do you remember? I, that? I've never yeah. seen anyone get dressed as quickly as getting out of a pool as a libertarian girl at a at a pool party. But I was literally putting on my clothes while I was still in the pool. No, no, literally here's shaking. The, here's the thing, okay. It, to, to the girls that are listening that have thought about coming to our pool parties, you have to understand it's 50-50 men, women. No, I'm kidding. There is actually a very good ratio. Uh, but very, as far as libertarian oh, yeah, men go. Yeah, perfect. And Kat, Kat is just, she's 20 and she's self-conscious. So she's, she's still not, you know, confident yet. But, you know. Uh, you, she's not running on the treadmill with Spangle confident. But she right. she was just like. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not a douche. I'm keto confident. <laughs> right. I just felt like I was at a market and I was being. Um, like, Auctioned. No, I was going like a deli market, like a food, <clears throat> like I was a piece of meat and like people were getting me, but you took that 
a little far. It was so, really oh, just did a, I? It was, I did. It was really just mm-hmm. a couple of the guys were really. Uh, they were. After well, the creeper terrain is a real phenomenon. It's yeah. not like it's fake. And so oh, I tried yeah. to warn you that it's a real thing. It's the creeper terrain phenomenon is real. There were yeah. advanced me warnings. Case. Yeah, I mean, we warn everybody. I'm like, I'm telling you, there are going to be two or three people that you're like, holy shit, I might be in their trunk if I'm not watching closely. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. and, and I think that's any party that you. It's go like to, a Seinfeld episode. You guys covered but, it right on the last episode. But we know it is like Seinfeld. We yeah. know Everybody's who nuts. the yeah we know who the creeps are, and so we do our best to protect. You know, like hey. Vladdy Divac, get out of here. Get away from here. <laughs> oh, no. uh, you mean Michael, who was 23? <laughs> yeah, that old gag. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, you, you had a great time, didn't you? I did. It was a very fun party. It was so fun, in fact, that all of my friends, my college friends, right, they, like, texted me and were like, oh, my God, we saw your Snapchat story. Can we come to the next party? And I was like, I mean, I guess I'll add you guys to the list, but, like, we'll see. Are those uh, sorority girls? Thank you for listening to We Are Libertarian. They are no, invited. Yeah, uh, they probably wouldn't show up. So, <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, there was another, there was another uh, young, confident woman there, and uh, she was with Brett Bittner. The my favorite part of the night was when we cucked Bittner. When, it was funny because he, uh, I just, I, I, I just wanted to fuck with Bittner because he had wrecked Jeremiah Morrill's truck. Then he mm-hmm. has the balls to not pay for it. So Jeremiah, he hit Brett Bittner hit a. Um, fire hydrant in his own driveway after asking jeremiah to borrow his truck first to move something and then gives it back to him unfixed doesn't offer to pay to have it fixed we're working on that it's gonna be fixed it's gonna brett Brett and i are gonna be fine however but it is a major inconvenience what makes it way worse way worse he shows up at the party in a new nissan he drives his brand new car 300 miles in the car 300 miles in the car brand new car to the party and there's Jeremiah's truck that he wrecked sitting in the front yard. Next to it, Jeremiah has to hide the damage, so he parks it next to a bush so his neighbors can't see it. <laughs> he was 100% bit nerd. And I, I just thought, that is the most awful manners I've ever seen, and you're supposed to be a southern gentleman. It's the ultimate in being bit nerd. It, it is. the poster story. And, yeah. And you have to understand, like... Bittner has cock blocked me so many times. There's something about Bittner that he loves to cock block me specifically. <laughs> and that he, I don't know if he knows it, but he seems to have a rivalry with me that I feel like there's some sort of tension there. And so this is why I love Greg. Okay. This is why Greg is my co host and my <laughs> platonic life partner. Thank God I'm not compared to Bittner. Otherwise, because <laughs> I'd go find some rope and a ceiling fan. Because <laughs> Bittner made a very big deal of saying, ho, ho, ho. We're going upstairs. He, he announced he, that to the room. He, he yeah, more, he oh, did. Oh, yeah. Of course he did. Of course. <laughs> and so Greg, I need I need to charge an hourly rate for those rooms. Greg, I told them to leave money when they left. Yeah. Greg, There's got to be a cleaning fee or something. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Greg looks at me and just goes, "You know what? We should go say hi to Morgan." And I go, "You know what? You're right." <laughs> <laughs> so, so we ke- we keto confidently march our way <laughs> right behind them, like. I my belly is touching Morgan's behind <laughs> as we walk it in, and Bittner catches wind and then immediately tries to shut the door in our face. I, again, high performance athlete, shove my body between the door and the jam, and we bust our way in there. And then, uh, and then everyone else follows suit right. into the room, and he is livid, trying he to push people so out. Oh man! But his, his, his non diabetic state has rendered him muscleless and we, unable yeah. to. You, you guys know, got to see my uh, my treadmill, and you were checking out my, my Netflix. And my Netflix, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a video on the Instagram of. <laughs> so we might as well turn it on. <laughs> well, you know what, Morgan? Listen, you you're in good shape, but everybody could be in better shape. Let's turn on the treadmill. Let's go. Ooh, a video. And uh, you know me and Tandem. Morgan, me and Morgan just walked on the treadmill a little bit, uh, and then you know Morgan and I hung out on the bed and took some photos, <laughs> and then uh, we all the while Brett's standing there just furious. Oh, yeah. oh, he was so <laughs> fuming mad. at you. Oh God, he was so mad. And then later on, you know they we, they finally got the door shut. I strategically waited a good two minutes until the whole affair, in their mind, must have been forgotten. When I started playing Pony by Genuine, uh. <laughs> through the door, <laughs> she opens the door, oh my god, and we bust in again. Damn right, <laughs> damn right. And at one point, Francis came in, because like, Bittner had got up off the bed and was just like, you know, standing there in the corner, like, weeping. And then uh, I'm like, Francis, just come over and sit on the bed and let's just tell him it's used. It's, like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's booked for the night. She's she did. Taken. She plays along and Brett's just like, ah, 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 you know, much slower at his own pace, but still very right. mad. 
And then finally we let them go after storming it. We stormed that room like it was Normandy. Oh, several times. It was great. It yeah. was very fun. And then you went and helped folks downstairs. Oh, well, yeah. We went, yeah. We went downstairs and helped Creighton. Creighton had found a lovely Creighton young lady. Endeavors. He's very evening. young, and so he needs guidance. He needs guidance. So Greg plopped on the couch, and I just stood over them uh, with my phone. And, uh, you know, we were just giving him advice. And, and what, what did you say to young Creighton? I don't even remember. <laughs> I do remember I made him recite the declara- or the Independence Day speech by Bill Pullman. I believe you said go down on her like one of the, the Twin bus. Towers. Yeah. yeah, go down on her like it's a Twin Tower. Yeah. And so uh, Creighton, of course, was not happy. Well, now, you know. But I think everybody's favorite moment was when uh, Harry got the opportunity to swim. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, you're, uh, you are of the African persuasion, correct? Yes. Yes, I am. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, Harry, uh, I'm proud of you for getting in the pool. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we all know that there are those stereotypes mm-hmm. out there, and mm-hmm. some of them are, you know, you stereotypes are stereotypes. Yeah. Not all of them are true. Can you or can you not swim? I can swim. Oh, okay. Well, so you were I just- can't tread water. I cannot float. I sink like a box of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> but I can Why? swim. Why would you sink? I don't know why. It's the extra I, muscle. You know, could you, I, I, I remember saying something. Do you remember saying it? I uh, think you quoted I've, me one time. Uh, I've been told I can't say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there are no hard R's on the We Are Libertarians yeah. show. No. But yeah, I just can't tread like water. I just sink like a... I just sink. Yeah. But I can't <laughs> swim. Cat was I having could. a really good time. Everybody was playing basketball. And then Harry gets in the pool. And it was like the scene in Jaws where everyone <laughs> comes <laughs> flying now, out I of the beach. I always got scared because Spangle yelled in my ear and it alarmed me. Because uh, I was trying to calm No, no, no. no. It hit may your not flight have or been, flight. Yeah, it I hit may, my then flight. Then you saw black flight. and you got really scared. It may not have been Spangle that yelled <laughs> this, but what was yelled? <laughs> Somebody yelled as we were swimming. Somebody, you know, I'm just treading water, whatever. Somebody, sw- oh. Oh. oh, mittens, <laughs> mittens. mittens. Okay. Get your pussy under control. <laughs> uh, somebody yelled, "Oh God, what?" What? Uh, Give him your wallet. I said, said? Uh, "All right, your wallet. Oh, play dead." All right, everyone, it's Harry's turn to swim. White women, back here, hurry! White women, <laughs> yeah. get over here. I and said, I "What?" Like, Oh white, white women out of the pool. <laughs> it's Harry's turn. And then I yelled over to our friend Christine. I was like, Christine, it's your turn. You can get in with Harry, but only for half the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I just see Harry like waiting with his fro and his glasses. He was like, feeling it out. But yep. he, feeling it out. He, he gets like, to the edge. Now, you have to understand, Jeremiah's pool is one of those pools where it has a very flat, shallow end and then it gets to the deep end and it's an it's an enormous drop it's, it's an in-ground yeah. pool and it's about three foot six in the yeah. shallow end great for kids or harry it has a and continental then, like and, divide and, right there and then there's and then there's a shelf and there's a there's a six foot d- you would have been fine harry you, you could have you, stood up and still breathe yeah, around the perimeter oh, no, there's that, actually there's like a shelf a all the side. way around yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm still scary i don't want to take that chance so it, we start playing horse and harry literally won't go beyond the drop <laughs> yeah so it <laughs> ruins the game because harry Will only shoot from like across the pool. Yeah, you could have, you could Harry's have taking forty foot jumpers. <laughs> Harry, you I, could have put a box of free Terry Labonte hats in the other yeah. pool, and he wouldn't have gone and gotten them. Harry, listen, I need some more community service hours. Can I teach you how to swim? <laughs> <laughs> you need to teach Too him how to float. Drunk night at Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can swim. I just can't float. I sink. And, and so Greg is very excited because he goes, let's play basketball. Harry's on my team. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> First pick. I, I, I haven't bought a basketball for that thing since I got the yeah. pool. Mm-hmm. And we had the most flat. Yeah, it it, so flat. The only time it, it was a little bit. It was like pine tar. It had sat under a tree forever, you could tell. Because I have never seen it. It would stick to your hand. Yeah. And like, <laughs> it, it would spider. not come off in chlorine. Yeah. <laughs> it would not like come off. Chemicals and water. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. Every hand. time you try to make it roll, it would just stick. It just wouldn't For, come off. At first, I thought some of Harry was just coming off in the pool. And it turns out it was the tree. Wow. <laughs> First off, you know, I showered before I came in. <laughs> Such a nice layer off it. So thank you very much. Oh, no. It was, but it was yeah, a great no. time. And I think, I think Harry had fun. The only thing is, he didn't like it that he was defeated by Jeremiah and I. Yeah, well, took me a while to me. understand. Like I couldn't shoot the basketball like a basketball. Yeah, I had instantly like, wait a minute, I gotta like throw this thing like it's a football. Yeah, it was like Shaq free throws. Like, yeah, right off the fingertips. <laughs> and then once I realized, I was like, wow, this thing's going in for me. I know. <laughs> well, you hit. Yeah, you got hot, and then all of a sudden, yeah. like you just would not leave. Yeah, like. It, it, we were shooting half court shots, and then eventually Jeremiah and I were like, "All right, we're bored. We beat. Yeah, we we, we, yeah. we won, and we might as well just end this game." Yeah, it was over. Yeah. Here at We Are Libertarians, we do not uh, stereotype. So just because Harry is black doesn't mean that he's always good at basketball. 
I happened to be on the team. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. You played high school basketball? Mm. Well, I played middle school basketball, and then I oh. gave it up for soccer. Mm. Oh, that's right. Then soccer mm. took over your life. And, mm. uh, and then softball. And then softball. And softball. Yeah. But um, no, I'm act- I hate basketball, but I'm actually strangely good at it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, Kat? <laughs> well, I- Why did you make air quotes? Yeah. Racist. Did I? Strangely. <laughs> Strange quote. Oh, yeah. nervous tick. I don't. Know. Yeah. I don't know. Then she yeah. told she told some joke about jelly beans, and everybody got really offended and left the party. No, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they scattered at that point. But <laughs> no, they scattered when you got in the pool. Not because you got in the pool, but because Spangle were yelled. You, were you nervous s- leaving the party? Because you were very nervous parking your car. You showed up, <laughs> and you parked on the street, and blocked every bit of parking I had. You parked mm-hmm. your car on the street, walked away, right. you know, instead of parking in the yard, well, where I, there were thirty other cars already parked. Hard? There were not, no, there were there were no cars parked They were, in they were all lined up nicely. No, because mm-hmm. I was the first, because I parked the first, because I got there so early, because I, I don't know things. And then I then I tried to get Kat to drive in, to pull in, and she's, she wouldn't come any closer. Well, I don't I have depth perception. <laughs> like, I really don't. And then she hit my leg. Debt perception. Debt perception. perception. Yes. Mm-hmm. Avid Dave Ramsey listener, debt perception. Debt. <laughs> I'm on a program. <laughs> she could see the debt. I was like, oh, that's good. the baby steps. I've been going to the speech pathologist, like, whatever. <laughs> Are you paying the money? Because I had to back program? out a uh, listener's Go car. Because, oh, okay. like, Kat was trying to leave at, like, uh, one. Was that right? <laughs> yeah, I was so tired. Yeah, it was, like, one o'clock. And someone had swimming all day running. In, and uh, mm-hmm. someone, and this girl, and so she just hands me her keys because she's way too drunk. Oh, to, this like, was my impression. Her car. Remind you, I don't know this woman. Okay, so, yeah, she gives the keys to Greg, and then she comes up to me and te- knocks on my window. I'm like, oh, my God, I ran her over. I didn't even move my car yet. And I, like, <laughs> rolled the window down, and she's like, listen, I don't know you, but I- I'm proud of you for showing up today. And I'm like, it's night, but th- thanks. She's like, honestly, have a great night. And then just ran inside yeah she did and she just like left and so then i backed out her car so cat could get out and then you like were the most <laughs> awkward driver i have ever seen <laughs> i had oh, to pull into a neighbor's driveway so because cat like is coming down the wrong side and i'm and i'm like she's gonna get a dui for sure and this we're, we have we're 10 feet outside of the driveway and so i have to literally pull in your neighbor's driveway so cat can go but i was right the-, the sad part is i was like not drinking like yeah. I was literally just sober. Un- She's just a terrible driver. <laughs> I'm a horrible driver. It was unbelievable. It was Austin Powers esque trying to back up the golf cart. She, she oh, refuses man. to drive on 465, which is the interstate loop around Indianapolis. So she ended up taking 65 <laughs> through downtown, through the South Split, through all the construction that Jeremiah is causing near my house. You're welcome. L- let and me it, tell you what I saw. <laughs> it took hours to get here today because she wouldn't go on 465. Mm. Ugh. And then no. I ended up having to get back on it anyways. So. Well, it was it was a fun fun party. On the yeah. on the list of grievances I have after uh, after you left, I understand Francis, my cousin, was trying to uh, trying to sober folks up. And how do you sober people up, Greg? You make them coffee and give them a little bit of red meat, yeah, some some grease to soak it up. Exactly. <laughs> they went to the refrigerator. And uh, Dear Leader had been put in charge of uh, bringing the hamburgers. Yeah, it was his his uh, debt was. I, I and, spent uh, eighty dollars on food for the pool party. I spent one hundred and twenty five on liquor, and they drank it. That all. doesn't help me at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my my guests go to the refrigerator looking for burgers, and there's nothing in there. Yeah, they, it was a crime. They were stolen. Hmm. They were not stolen. Who shows up and brings gifts to a party? You bring, you bring food for everybody to share. It's a communal party. Mm-hmm. And commu- then you take them when you leave early. By communal, you mean you get to keep $20 worth of 88 12 meat? That's the payment for hosting. Right. No. Yeah. That's I left host- all my Hawaiian punch. Yeah. Yeah, I poured that out the next morning. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> why? You. Why? <laughs> I left a whole package of hot dogs. What? So you brought cheap ass hot dogs. I brought, <laughs> I Hebrew, brought Nash- Hebrew National. Those are good ass hot dogs. Uh, uh, okay, thank well, you, Tad yeah. Western, for grilling. By the way, you did a wonderful yeah, job. Tad yeah, Tad Western, hell of a it. griller. I did Damn straight. I brought those chicken breasts for me. Those okay. taste real yeah. good. Thanks. Of course, I, like a lot of people ate Harry, my chicken breasts. Would you breast. like a nibble? Nope, no, Harry doesn't get any because Harry just made fun Spangle of. Spangle smile. Harry just made fun of my grill, so Harry gets none. It's not a grill, first off. It's, I I I, paid, I arrived and Cat had your grill in flames. I which I she did. Which yeah. I was shocked. That thing had flames. Could do flames. I but I bought the meat. Every iron could do can grease I eat fire. This, by the way, Absolutely, yeah. Cool. I thought you were stopped. I'm also so hungry. <laughs> I'm gonna have a hamburger. <laughs> this is one of 
quote unquote your hamburgers, and Cat and I are going to enjoy this. Stolen right now. hamburgers. She's got to uh, she's got to bulk up for uh, softball season. Nope. <laughs> oh boy. When she go get her new Subaru. I almost choked on. <laughs> Not the first time you choked, but um. Uh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and Harry does the offending. These are very dry. Yep, they apparently. would have been better on Saturday night. <laughs> These are not not good hamburgers, Cap. Honestly, it's meat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we gotta get started. Oh, <laughs> I need something to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Dear leader, let me. This was a this was a bit that should have been thought. That is mine. <laughs> She just she, tried your, your water's don't you there. hate it when the dark meat is ashy? <laughs> you need she, some cocoa butter so it goes down. She just tried to f- bottle feed me her so butter. So what's going on in the world, Greg? The uh, the, the Great Lakes are overflowing. They're the Great Lakes down, are overflowing. They're, they're shutting down all the shipping because it, it, we've had too much rain. Yes, too and, much rain. Uh, and I think the uh, the Middle East is falling apart like it is every week. It is. The Great Lakes, Michigan's being punished for being godless commies. Mm-hmm. You know, God no longer lives in there. So that's what's going on with that. And then Wisconsin is... Yeah. Two being punished. They're all being punished for, <laughs> for voting. Oh, yeah. It's God hugging us closer. That's what global warming is. <laughs> That's why Trump pulled out of the Paris Accord. Is, you know, we don't need God to hug us any tighter. And so there's no reason to control carbon emissions. It's funny. Lake Ontario is literally at like a record level. It hasn't been this high in, in like lo- recorded history. Canada doesn't know how to control their lakes. Why the <laughs> fuck are we talking about Canada? Hey, Give wait, the fuck wait. about Canada. I saw this one tweet that it said like, oh, God. I just ruined the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. It. it was like Cat so, has the best stories. Uh, I know, it was so funny. <laughs> they always go somewhere. <laughs> I promise it was funny. No, it was like this one time. Oh, politician or Donald Trump. Um, Never we heard don't of need him. global warming because God, we have God. God, bitch! I sent you scientists. <laughs> it was funny. Did you just read the meme was, on my podcast? Yeah. <laughs> no. It was visually yeah. stunning, cat. <laughs> Honestly, I just. <laughs> Why'd your mic just turn off, Craig? Turn your mic on. I feel stupider and stupider every day. Blame, the, blame the mic like Clayton did. Clayton. Clayton Harrington. The yeah. Third. At the pool party, Harry made it his mission for <laughs> roughly eight straight hours to call Clayton Harrington Clayton. It took. And at one point, drunk. They, they were chanting Clayton Onios on the roof. Clayton, <laughs> Clayton was drunk. <laughs> For eight solid hours. Yeah. And he, he, at one point, he goes, you know what, man? Let's fucking do this. And they lock, they fight and lock horns. It's on the Instagram. It's very funny. And then the nerve of the parents, the, your your parents broke it up. I was very disappointed. Yeah. So. Right when I was getting ready to, like, break through his tie up, I was getting ready behind him and, like, German suplex him right into the food table. All right. So we, we need to get into the, <laughs> get into the topics today. It's too much, too much fun. We had a great time. I uh, hope you enjoyed the stories from the pool party. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, we'll have one in the, uh, one every month for the next uh, couple months. So. Yeah, because Jer's birthday is next month, uh, June yep. twenty uh, July. We're or celebrating July. it on Dustin Reed's birthday, July 9th. This is my actual birthday, so it'll it will carry into my birthday. Yeah, and, and yeah. you yeah, you open up if uh, you offer a substantial amount of donation to We Are Libertarians, and so you get to come out. If you make a fifty dollar donation between now and August twelfth. You will get a uh, premium guest pass. You have to be invited to this pool party. You yeah. can't just show up, okay? So don't try to do that, right. people. But if you make a We Are Libertarians donation of $50 or more and say, hey, this is for the pool party, we will give you an invitation to the pool party, and I will have one of uh, one of the castmates of the Boss Hog of Liberty will be your cabana boy for the evening. Mm-hmm. Either Dakota or Tanner, your choice. Last <laughs> time it was Sarah. Uh, well, uh, the ladies seem to like the gentleman more. And Sarah... Uh, I. She's taken. Spoken for. Yeah, she's taken. <laughs> she's not available. She's been claimed. <laughs> Seat's Sorry. taken. I'm having a hamburger. <laughs> um, <laughs> they must be really dry because you guys are silent over there. <laughs> no, like, and it looks like you have like, carrying oatmeal the podcast in your now. mouth. They're, <laughs> they're an hour old. I was like, uh, uh, we'll get to it in like the first 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't. Um, so, yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to keep eating them. You know how much. The bit is over, Spangle. Now it's just punishing yourself. You, you know how much I love to revenge eat on this podcast. <laughs> oh, that's the thing is, that you're, you know, Bittner's not even here for you to eat Chick fil A. <laughs> I can't believe you don't have a bun on it. Uh, I'm out of buns, and you know, oh, I had, you didn't yeah. take the buns home. I could have brought the buns over here if I had known you. I wish you had. Them. I still have a whole package of my hot dogs left. <laughs> uh, so if you're gonna steal, steal everything. I didn't steal. Don't aggravate the people I paid that are for drunk. It with my own money, the drunks it, are looking through the refrigerator, going, "It has to be here somewhere." Nobody would take the hamburger. Maybe a little personal responsibility would do them well. Okay, there were plenty of chips and other things. This is going to feed me for a month. Okay. So next up on the list of current events. <laughs> Spangles you, Indian giving. And you still haven't apologized for baptizing me. You owe me 
you owe me and the listeners an apology. When dun, dun, you and the listeners apologize dun, dun. for stealing the hamburger, we're I didn't have an steal apology. anything. I oh, we're gonna have another thing. feud, huh? Oh, is this, <laughs> stand off? this is not I, going well, Greg. <laughs> this isn't going well. I will magnanimously apologize for bathing you without soap. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay. You saved him. Uh, yes, you cared about his liberty soul. Mm-hmm. Next I, time, it's full immersion, buddy. I apologize for nothing. <laughs> thank, thank you for. Uh, all right, so yes. get a waterproof phone because we're gonna have some fun next time. <laughs> I have an iPhone Seven. It is waterproof. Giddy up. Now. Um, <laughs> You don't want to go to war with me, okay? I've got a Greg Lenz. <laughs> yeah, I've got Dakota Davis. We've got a, what's the that spawn mean? of We've him. got a Rhonda or whatever. A Linda. <laughs> Linda. I've got a Linda. Linda. <laughs> I will crush ISIS. A side note, um, will I become sick after eating three pieces of fish, a large sweet potato, and a giant hamburger? And a two protein shakes? <laughs> and two protein shakes. It'll be no. fun. You're with build, cheese? You're building muscle. Things are going to go well tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, God. You're going to shit at your friend's house. You're going to pull a Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Greg, we've got a big... So, we're going to post this... Uh, it'll probably be posted right about the time that uh, James Comey starts his testimony. But we got the the text of the testimony today. We did. We're, we're recording this on... On a Wednesday. Wednesday, June 7th. Um, yeah, I'm getting... I'm guest hosting. I guest hosted on Rob's. Uh, I'm guest hosting on the Johnny Rocket Launchpad. I'm guest hosting on uh, Lions of Liberty tomorrow night. I'm, so much content. I'm guest, Spangles everywhere. I'm guest hosting mm-hmm. on Leading Liberty with Jen Gray. What's that? Shut up, Greg. And uh, so I'll be on that show tomorrow. Who's she? So she a, was a she, lady in Liberty. Eh? She uh, she's a, a very uh, attractive, brilliant. Uh, young leader of liberty. So go check out Leading Liberty. I'll be on that podcast tomorrow talking about huh. the fuck off. <laughs> talking about the. Are you flying in studio or is this no, a no, remote no. deal? No, just remote. How does that help you? It, it helps all of us because I'm going to be sharing the. Uh, I'm going to be standing up for infighting. Infighting is good. So you'll have to check that out. So, but. James, so we're recording this on a Wednesday, and James Comey's testimony was released to the press because James Comey said, I want people to have time to digest this. I want the committee members to have time to digest what I'm going to say. I feel that I have some very detailed and important things that need to be said. Can we break in for an ad read? Harry has just found a deal on (laughs) martinarmory.com. A Ruger LCP 380 for $265. How much would it be elsewhere? Probably four hundred. Yeah. Holy cow! I know it is a steal. Yeah, granted, it's not the one with the laser sight, but like for that price, you, you can add, add the laser sight. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, back to what you're doing. But we're just over here browsing the sponsor website. Yeah, <laughs> I, listen, I'm not mad at all. MartinArmory.com. So, so yes, James Comey uh, released a statement, and man, was it detailed. And this has been the rap about James Comey. James is a very detail-oriented person. He documents everything, and the letter that he released, the testimony that he will give tomorrow was full of so many little facts. And I heard Michael Smirkanish, who is a a lawyer, talk on CNN Today saying, you know, if you're in a courtroom and it's he said, she said in a court situation, the person with the most specific facts is going to win the day. Yeah. And so when you have somebody like Donald Trump who is very broad in everything that he does and says, it's going to be very difficult to read the Comey testimony, to listen to the Comey testimony tomorrow, and not walk away going, this guy, he documented to cover his ass, but he also felt that this was a pretty important meeting. He did, and the guy's got a track record of being meticulous, and it's something the FBI does as well. I, it's something I would struggle to do, because he, after his first... Um, the first meeting at Trump Tower with the president-elect after he briefed him on the nature of the Russian hacking, he ended up getting immediately leaving the built Trump Tower, getting into the uh, SUV and started typing up the notes from the, uh, the from memory of the meeting and what happened. And so he's met Trump nine times and meticulously took notes after every single uh, occurrence. Now, let's put that into perspective, because he met with Donald Trump while head of the FBI or he met with Barack Obama well, twice. Had, twice. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it was a very small and it was very superfluous things, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, so the first time he spoke to him ever one-on-one was, um, let's see, what was he briefing? He was briefing him with a, another individual. And off the top of my head, I can't remember, but it wasn't something very important. It was uh, the second time was simply to give him a call and wish him well uh, as he was leaving office. 
You you have to understand, Barack Obama the, to, was known as somebody who didn't meet a lot with his generals. The the movie I think it's called War Machine on Netflix that is sort of a spoof on the General McChrystal McChrist affair kind of covers this. So really recommend that. A great movie. Foreign uh, policy and Brad military uh, military forays were not something he was terribly concerned with. He didn't have a lot of one on ones with people, but still, uh, when you talk about a, an administration over the, the six months nine times starting with january 9th i believe it was when he first w met with donald trump and told him that he was not the subject of an investigation because mm -hmm, he had testified to, before congress as well to on the uh on that every other interaction always kind of came back to that with donald trump yes for for james comey and it finally got to a point where he says in his testimony uh he was in a meeting and this this all cir circles around a specific incident where they're at a meeting, and Donald Trump, it's a security briefing, and Donald Trump asks uh, Jeff Sessions. Yeah, it's February the Oats, 14th, the, the Oval General. Office meeting, and uh, it was a scheduled counterterrorism briefing for the president. And so he sat behind the desk with the CIA director, the director of the NCTC, um, the Attorney General, Homeland Security, uh, which NT NCTC's National Counterterrorism Center director, the Deputy CIA director. And then Jared Kushner was in the room as well, and um, they were leaving. They the meeting was concluding, and he says, "Hey, stay behind. I'd like to have a, have a word with you." Right. And the Attorney General Sessions slow walked out, mm -hmm. and you know, because he realizes that's a problematic thing. One on one conversations are not something you want to have a lot of as the President of the United States, especially when you are <laughs> eyeing the FBI because they're supposedly investigating you. Michael Flynn or you or, or your you associates or your associates, and which so, they were there. You know, they investigated Carter Page and then um, Paul Manafort. And uh, so the FBI director reports to the attorney attorney general. Yes. And so he uh, later on says i mean here's the here's where i think donald trump is in trouble okay this was a significant enough incident that james comey was thoroughly detailing everything that happened at this incident so he knew that at some point this was going to be something significant yeah especially and, given the situation he's coming in from where with president obama um he didn't get this kind of access or wasn't asked to do this much direct reporting. Absolutely. And it's really improper for the president of the United States. It's actually against regulations for the president of the United States to have direct contact with the FBI director when they're investigating the administration and talk about that specific thing. And so Donald Trump has at least broken some regulations if Well, Comey the thing stands. is Flynn had resigned. So that is the the nature of the discussion. So Flynn had resigned the day before. Okay. And so then Kushner even tried to stick behind a little bit and slow walked out. But he goes, hold on, I just want a word with him. Right. And so then he, they sit down and they start having a discussion, and they start talking about Mike Flynn. Mm -hmm. And in the course, he had he had mentioned that you know, um, you know, he was loyal, and that, that he had the reason he had fired him was the same reason they gave the press is that he had lied about the amount of contact he had had with the Russian ambassador to Mike Pence. And so that he felt they couldn't trust him. And so and then he says, you know, I hope you can see your way clearly to letting this go. Mike's a good guy. Then he agrees. He goes, Mike is a good guy. And then he goes, yes, he is a good guy. Um, and then he goes, I really hope that you can see your way to letting this go. And so to me, that is an obstruction of justice because that would be like saying, I mean, I don't, Trump's pretty cavalier and says a lot of things that, he wishes he wouldn't, you know, in hindsight. And he comes from the business sector, sector, and he's not a, you know, an attorney by any means. Nor does he know how the decorum or how you're supposed to respond to things in a way that won't get you in trouble. But that would be like me saying, you know, I really hope you you're saying to a detective, you know, since Chris, you know, Chris Bangle's already been found or you know not guilty, or they've decided, you know, it's it's they're not going to press charges. I hope you can, you know let this go and not keep harassing him see i take the opposite view of you i think that this is this is the end of the trump administration because what i, I don't know that it is going to meet the level of obstruction of justice but it certainly has the smell of it and that is all the democrats need to uh pursue this and hopefully win the house the, in their minds hopefully win the house back so that the house can then introduce articles of impeachment 
and then it becomes an issue. And then is Donald Trump going to get impeached and then thrown out of office? I don't think so. It's a massive distraction that they don't need. But to it have is exactly it when is they're a, trying to pass health care and tax reform and immigration reform and on down the list. It's highway tr- bills. It's transportation week. It's infrastructure week. Did you all hear about that? No, no, you didn't. Donald Trump can uh, has realized that he no longer controls the media cycle like he did during the campaign, and that just because the president goes out somewhere and does something that doesn't mean that it's going to be that day's news cycle the I th- news cycle today was the vice president flying on his plane with his birthday party <laughs> taking selfies with ted cruz of course so Lion Ted. <laughs> so I, be- I i believe that this is may it may not rise to the level of obstruction of justice but it is troubling to a level that someone who is uh some i find jim jim comey credible i find james comey to be somebody that is hated by both sides, so therefore, anytime a public servant is hated by politicians on either side, they're probably a good public servant. Why don't you stand with Rand? He voted no. Uh, 99 to 1, and here you are on the wrong side 99 of 99 to 1 for what? Confirmation of... Uh of Comey. Director Comey. I don't I don't I have no idea why he voted no. But in in this instance I think that Jim Comey James Comey has been painted into a lot of corners and he has done what he has felt is best and has done things that he knew were politically going to get him murdered or literally murdered uh, and uh, has said what he thinks what he believes to be the truth and I think that his behavior uh, after this meeting shows that he certainly thinks that it is uh, well it may not, it's something very serious and troubling because James Comey made detailed notes about every single thing that was said he then talked with his uh, his I don't know underlings deputy deputy, deputy directors director, people Rosenstein you know, he made sure that they or, were, uh, Andrew McCabe they were aware of it but they did not tell any of the people working on the cases about this particular meeting because they didn't want to taint that investigation and they also didn't want to open an investigation on trump because then if they were asked if they had ever done one they wouldn't have to admit to closing it which would be bad for the president right the reason that the reason he briefed him on that of the nature of that of how bad that would be politically for him he advised the president right so and then on top of that when the first time he gets alone with his superior and jeff sessions he says to sessions Hey, not for nothing, never leave me alone with that guy again. I don't want to be in a room alone with that guy because I am now in an untenable position because I've been put in a position that puts me in legal peril, him in legal peril, you in legal peril, and this is a serious problem. And so, uh, yes, and so Donald Trump was putting pressure on him to publicly say that Donald Trump was not the... He wanted it out there because the anonymous sources kept, you know, alleging that the that Don- he was. And ben Donald Trump fed that too by saying his phones were tapped at Trump Towers because of Carter right. Page and Paul Manafort. And so he wanted a confirm. He wanted uh, James Comey to come out and say directly the Trump administ- Donald Trump was not the subject of an investigation to stop the rumors that he was. Sure. And so the reason that he didn't want to do that is because of what happened during the election, where they come out and they say yes, and then they have to come out later and say no. You know, in this case, no, he's not under investigation. Well, now we're opening an investigation. And then the media scrutiny that would be the the political scrutiny that the FBI would be under while trying to do an investigation into the president of the United States would make the investigation so untenable that it wouldn't be functional. And so what Comey was saying to the president, who was refusing to listen, is that I'm protecting you. I'm protecting the FBI. I'm protecting the federal government. Uh, and I'm the doing- independence of the agency, because you don't want to lose institutional trust in the people responsible for investigating high crimes. And Absolutely. Treason. And so what this all speaks to what we have always known about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is so self-centered. And part of, part of us love the fact that Donald Trump is an outsider and that Donald Trump doesn't give a fuck about the system. But I watched Lindsey Graham. God forbid I ever agree with Lindsey Graham on anything but I felt what he had to say last night on special report on Fox News was with Brett Hume or Brett Hume Brett Bear was very interesting he what he never answered a question to Brett or to uh, Brett Bear he never answered the question towards the audience he addressed every answer that he was asked last night on special report to the president of the United States he said well my advice to you Mr. President is that you should do X Y and Z 
And he and at the end, uh, Brett goes, "Well, hopefully the president was listening." And he goes, "I hope he was too. I'm sure he was." I mean, because these guys now know that all he does is sit in front of the TV and watch these shows. Well, he also, you know, his world's getting smaller and smaller, and like the people he trusts are just—it's down to basically Rince Priebus, the vice president, Steve Bannon, and then Jared Kushner, and then Ivanka, right, and, and Kellyanne Conway. And, and, and so, as his world goes sm- grows smaller, he's he's now becoming more and more obsessed with his image and his. He he said to the Comey, "You've got to help me out here. The 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 ability of the presidency to do anything, aka my legacy, is on the line here. You've got to release me from this Russian thing." And he, well, he just wanted him to report that there was no investigation of Donald Trump, which sure. he didn't want to because in the event they opened one, he'd have to say that it had been opened if he was asked. And so what what uh, Lindsey Graham said last night on Fox News is the president. Mr. President, you need to just understand that there are mechanisms set in place. The system is here to protect you. You don't need to do too much. If you did nothing wrong, and most of us believe that you've done nothing wrong. It will take care of itself. It will take care of itself, and you need to just be quiet, stop tweeting, and let the system work. And he seems to be refusing to do that. He's calling the FBI director and possibly getting himself an obstruction of justice charge. Up on on bat is a perjury charge for somebody somewhere soon. This is what happened to Clinton. It's like, is it a big deal? He got a blowjob in the office? No, but it wasn't illegal. But the second you start obstructing it's, it's and the, the second you start... You. It's the cover-up that gets you every single time. The and nice thing is, I mean, he was... You could say he was smart enough or he was devious enough to make sure it's a he said, she said situation and that there, you know, there is enough reasonable doubt exists. Because at the end of the day, Director Comey's notes are based on a recollection of events. Absolutely. And the fact that he corroborated those events with three of his colleagues at the uh, Department of Justice and the FBI, they're hearing it now secondhand. That doesn't give it any more credibility in the court of law, because it is still, I mean, it does if a preponderance of evidence The court, is the court the, of law doesn't mean anything when you have a House of Representatives election coming up in 15 months. Man, I'll tell you, the court but of they public they opinion is at yes. stake now. Yeah, the court of public opinion is, but it, at the same time, his approval rating is higher than Bill Clinton's was at the same point in the presidency. Bill Clinton lost a whole lot of seats in, the, in his first midterm yeah. election. Well, Newt Gingrich and the Ditto Head Caucus. Yeah. You know, but I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't think that's the case per se. And from what I can tell from polling is the... The majority of people don't care about the Russian elect. Right. They really they and, and Donald Trump's caucus has already shut out any any press that, that disagrees with what they say. It, you're you're 100 percent right. Like they're the Kim Kardashian caucus. Like they're a reality TV caucus that's immune to the, the real news. Even even myself, who was who couldn't have been more critical of Donald Trump through the election, who is certainly no fan of Donald Trump, I have said on this podcast if we have agreed about the russian thing there is no there is no there there no there, there is nothing there what it's, mike it, flynn did wrong was he didn't report thirty three thousand dollars paid to him by real uh russia today to go get, deliver a speech and be seated next to a table and he should have reported that and then also registered as a foreign agent and gotten it approved with the department of state and didn't right then contact with the russian ambassador is unusual given he hadn't been seated yet this is all transition team stuff. Yeah. This is all from before he was even president. Right. right. And and I, I have to say that while we don't care about the Russian stuff, Americans will care about obstruction of justice and perjury. Yeah, and he just doesn't have – there isn't any obstruction of justice because if I say I hope you let it go, that isn't – you're not able to say I asked him to let it go. Right. right. I would hope you would versus you need to drop this. You, yeah. you, You've been instructed to drop the investigation. You're looking yeah. at it – hold on here. Let me finish this point and then, then – Sorry, I'll stop monologuing. But uh, I think that the Democrats, I don't know that they've been playing 8D intergalactic chess uh, with this. I don't think that they're smart enough to box Donald Trump in the way that they have boxed him in by playing on his personality so well. But if you were to look back, you could say... There is a conspiracy to get Donald Trump by creating the Russian narrative, keeping it in the media, keeping him obsessed with it to the point that he will now start doing things to protect his ego and legacy. The paranoia kicks in. The paranoia kicks in that he will now start doing things that are illegal. And we can't sit here and say that Donald Trump is done towing the line of obstruction of justice. No, he got right up to the the edge. Because he's going to keep doing it. This and is four months in. And so now, if I'm a Democrat, if I'm Chuck Schumer sitting there, I'm going, oh, he blinked. We got him. 
We just got to keep this going, and he will just keep will keep rattling his cage, and then eventually we're going to win the house back, and we're going to impeach him. Like to me, I would never have thought of it, but now I'm looking at it going. He's so obsessed with this that he's going to commit a crime. We just need to keep the pressure on and let Donald be Donald. Yeah, um, I don't. I, I I don't foresee that happening because of the nature of the upcoming midterms. Like this, I, they're not going to lose the Senate and they're not going to lose the House. Correct. Personally, yeah. like that. It, that's in my I, opinion. I think. I, yeah. Because I think, outside of him asking Tim to actually stop the investigation, like that discovery. Mm-hmm. Which at this point it is second the the FBI director took notes after a meeting Donald Trump and in it what he recalls from memory isn't a crime or anything doing anything wrong and then Mike Rogers and Dan Coast just testified director of the CIA and National uh, NSA they just testified today that they never felt pressure by the Trump administration to stop any investigation completely critical that the Republicans pass at least two big tr- things in this in this summer session yeah, they got to do right. tax reform. And and healthcare. Yeah, but they got to lead. They got to lead with tax reform because that's actually part of the healthcare bill. Like that. Right. They go hand in hand. Yeah. yeah. But they they have have to have accomplishments going in because it's going to be it's going to be campaign season and they will have nothing to run off of and the only thing that they're going to have to deal with is their failures and this investigation. You you promised you promised a wall. You promised Obamacare repeal and you promised a healthy economy. You got to do those three things if you're Donald Trump. The thing is, they pinned him on the transportation bill because there's no reason not to support it, whether you're a Democrat. Um, based on the way it's structured, outside of the privatization of the FAA, it would be a bill that you could walk right out of a Democratic committee. Mm-hmm. And so that and that that's job creation, and that's putting the ball in their court. So that is, he can just wail away on Twitter about why Democrats are anti-American worker. Yeah. The other thing that has always got me with this whole like this trying to go after Trump like that. If they are playing like uh, that 8D galactic backgammon, the thing is that the thing is the Democrats would have to use this whole like this whole thing to get it to bump somebody up for four years to get a name out there for 2020. They don't have anybody. They need to use this to find that rising star to go after Trump like that. That's what they're using it for. They're hoping somebody will stand up and mend the testimony. I'm like, wow, this person, this is our person in four years. They went after Trump. They went after the Lion King. So, but you know, right now they've just got what? what? It's going to be Joe Biden if they're smart, and he'll he, he's the yeah. only person in America that could in the Democratic Party that could beat Donald Trump in a matchup. But got the they're Democrats, record. so yeah. they won't be smart. Right. Well, he, I mean, he's got a pack, and he's going around giving speeches. But Joe's also older, correct, than the president. You know, and correct. but he, you know, Joe's arguably he's like the exact same agenda as Donald Trump, but he is everybody's you know kind of goofy uncle. And he's got like the likability, and the, he's slightly more affable than the you know he's not. Um, people get tired of strong leaders, mm-hmm. like people that people love it after a while, but then they start to tire of the constant like um, the constant force of will and, mm-hmm. and the chaos and the what feels like overreach by you know uh, leaving expected norms. Yeah, because that's what's weak. killing the president right now. But a lot of it is because he doesn't have any Republicans on his side. Yeah. The Republican Congress is killing him. Mm-hmm. You know, and we're not going to see it a vote on health care. What uh, McConnell said till September? Yeah, yeah, till uh, September, and and uh, and they're they're out of excuses. They will have nothing, and they're they they had every excuse in the book up until this point, and now what? They just drag on their feet because they want to. Well, yeah, I mean, ultimately, the Republicans have had this down to a science for since like the 1950s. Is yeah. that they just you know obstruct any type of legislation possible and just mm-hmm. yell cry foul. But eventually, you do have to get something done, and by doing it, once you make it, once they can tr- can get the narrative to be that there's no reason anyone would be against it and make it about the merits of the bill, that mm-hmm. does put pressure on Democrats because then you say, well, why didn't you want roads, bridges, American workers to go back? Right. I mean, even Jeremiah, the libertarian king of Henry County, supports publicly funded roads and sells the <laughs> steel they're built, the bridges are built with. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I like to drive my car, man. <laughs> exactly. Uh-huh. But I mean, the transportation yeah. bill is a solid bill if threat. you're a, if you're a big, you know, big government statist. I just wish that if my, you know, that I was the one that wrecked my truck. But whatever, that's fine. <laughs> Personal responsibility just, and all. I just want smooth, flat roads. Why can't they be flat? That's why I don't like driving my RX-8 all the you time. You live in the, the flattest ro- part of America, Harry. No, there's potholes everywhere. <laughs> my car's too low to the ground, so I'm driving the Subaru around because there's freaking potholes Harry, everywhere. Harry, I know you've been through a lot, but come on. <laughs> what? 
Subaru. I like. Oh. It's yeah. an Indiana made car. Yeah. Yeah. He's Hoosier through and through. Yeah. Sure. I even got like my America rotary motor. <laughs> what burns more gas than anybody's truck here? Thirteen miles to the gallon. Fuel efficiency. Uh, that's a that's a tie with my truck. About 13. <laughs> All right, so James Coe on the boat. So Back I'm looking to co- forward to his testimony no. tomorrow, as long as it's not yeah. anything other than his remarks. It's going to be good. Yeah, I mean, I can't. They said the DC bars are planning um, entire. They're planning entire happy hours around his testimony tomorrow mm-hmm. and using it as like a, a, uh. an event. Yeah. I I feel like we're gearing up for the Super Bowl, but it's going to be a high school football game. If he sticks to what yeah. he released, this thing's over. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, like Rich Lowry reviewed it, and all of the editors at the National Review reviewed it, and there's no so there's no obstruction his, of justice. He's written his testimony, but he's going to answer questions, right? Yeah, he's going to answer questions. So that's where it gets interesting. Well, but, if it goes anything like the questions today to <laughs> yeah, Dan but, Coates and uh, you know Mike what? Rogers, but can we like rewind back to the Benghazi hearing? And I was remember just Hillary that. Clinton's testimony when she was up there and but how disappointing that it. was. <laughs> yeah, but you have to also uh, Jim James Comey is very boring. And 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 Hillary is a little more brash. That's why he's a bureaucrat, and she almost won. She won the popular vote for presidency. James Comey is not going to say anything more, in my opinion, tomorrow than uh, I, I'm just going to l- refer to my statement and leave it at that. Mm. I mean, that's that's really what I think. He's he'll he'll he's not going to say anything broad and sweeping. He's never been the kind of guy who's going to throw the system under the bus. And that is ultimately what he feels he is protecting, in my view. He is protecting the system. He is protecting the FBI. And he he doesn't care about protecting Donald Trump, but he knows that to protect Donald Trump is to protect the presidency, which protects the executive branch. And that ultimately is what he cares about. And he's not going to go too far out of, on a limb. Oh, I'm calling it now. It's going to be so disappointing that the liberal tears will be delicious. <laughs> and I also, we're at the point where... If you get your news from, like, it, you even see it with like libertarians. We get an entirely different news stories than anyone that like is a normie that we <laughs> interact with. Yeah, Republicans get all of their news stories from news sources that reinforce everything they already believe. And if you read the t- the president's t- the president's already responded to Comey's testimony, and in it he says this is the exact vindication of everything I've always been saying. I was never the subject of an investigation. And he uh, and I never asked for him to stop the, he took any to investigation. Twitter to announce Comey's replacement the week he's testifying. That was brilliant. To, yeah. to, uh, offer. We're up, moving on now. Yeah, he offered the new FBI director uh, Ray, isn't it? Chris yeah, Ray. Christopher yeah. Ray. Yeah, Christopher Ray, who is the Bridgegate attorney for Chris Christie's people that were found guilty and <laughs> got a sweetheart deal. And then um, I, they said though, this guy he's pretty young. He went to Yale Law, Yale undergrad. He's from Georgia. Zell Miller, um, and oh, Saxby, Saxby Chambliss, like. Called him a good boy, back oh, boy. back when he was confirmed oh, for the okay. Department of Justice uh, position <laughs> under George W. Bush. Is he black? No, oh. no, no, no. He's as white as white gets. Yeah. Like a family, long, a nice Southern tradition of uh, family attorneys. Mm-hmm. Uh. And so he uh, he went and got rich this last year in private practice for mm-hmm. Spalding and or King Spalding, and I think in Atlanta. Spalding. Yeah, and uh, now, but now he's the new director of the FBI, and it's I'll tell you though, it's a big job for a guy this young because you don't see FBI directors this this young. He led right. the criminal division of the justice department from 03 to 05 under w yeah yes. right after 9 11 right yeah he's somebody that is well known in washington dc but it's he, just a big leap ahead yeah mm-hmm. and then uh, trump released his appellate jor- um, appellate court replacements today and they are all badass like really? gorsuch oh, level yeah he, he appointed what three he even- constitutionalists are like it's like you just took people what? better than Scalia and appointed them to the appellate courts. They're right. losing their mind over how – even like uh, David French for the National Review, who's the biggest Trump critic there is, was like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> These people – he did three bios on all of them. And so yeah, – I feel bad I missed that. Yeah, well, it got drowned out. You know, and the FBI director, okay. most people didn't even see that, you know, Chris Ray got appointed today or they announced it. <laughs> but if unless Comey changes his tune, which he can't – he can't say that he was under investigation because then he committed perjury when he testified and then he lied to the president. Right. right. So he's kind of boxed in. The only thing you can say is, did you feel pressured? And Rogers and Coates already said no. And I would be shocked if he said, yes, I felt that the president was trying to handle me or pressure me into stopping the investigation into Michael Flynn. Right. Mm-hmm. I really question Dan Coates' career choices at this point, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there is no one who is more establishment than Dan Coates in the history of U.S. politics. <laughs> like, he is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. He did what Evan Bayh did, only like 
when Evan Bayh came back here to run in Indiana for Senate. He was a, s- a senator in the 90s yeah. in Indiana, and then he left. and he got went scared to, off by Evan Bayh. Went and did, did defense contracting. Yep. yep. And yep. then came back and won, and like out of nowhere, because he didn't. He was like, oh, it's so great back to be in the Hoosier State, and he hadn't been back here in 13 years or something <laughs> yeah, like right. that. Yep. Mm-hmm. He literally lived in uh, Virginia. He's, Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. He's our yep. senator from Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> and then he retires and takes the uh, takes this job with Obama or, or with uh, with Trump. And honestly, he should have stayed retired because now he's got a bigger mess in his hands than well, he ever than he ever could ask for. I don't know. I I don't know that this is. I, I maybe I'm crazy, but I don't think this is going to change any. I don't. At worst, no matter how bad this gets, I think the Republicans still maintain the House and still maintain the Senate. Mm-hmm. At best, if Trump does get progress and they actually make pro, if they repeal Obamacare or you know even though it's not the best bill, but it's what's available to get. I think they pick up seats. It's it's just based on the way it's set it re- up. It really depends upon performance at this point. It, I think. It, it it depends on them having a team that's competent, and when you're pushing out Jeff Sessions, who offered to resign. Well, he didn't like pushing- it that he he stepped he recused himself on this. Sure. Which that's when Comey's notes. That's what he had talked about with the other. Um, his deputy director and then someone from justice was that it would be likely that in this event Sessions would recuse himself and the president. As you can see from when you actually read what he said during the dinner they had in the green room, just the two of them, it, loyal. Like he asked him flat out, he's like, "I need loyalty," and he's like, "Well, I'll give you honesty." And then the president says, "I need honest loyalty." <laughs> <laughs> and and so like you, it's crystal clear. And like he talks about how it was just an awkward pause, and neither would after the president said he needed loyalty after the honesty response by Comey, silence, and they just it was a standoff. I just I look at this and I go, okay, he's pushing out Sessions, he's pushing out Priebus, he's pushing out any, he's bringing in Lewandowski who is abusive to people. Uh, I I just don't feel that he is. It, Donald Trump is as incompetent, if not more so, than we thought he was going to be. Like he is at this point just completely obsessed with his image, and he is completely unable to let people go out and do what they're what they do best like the transportation stuff he he continually dips his hand in instead of letting elaine chow who mitch mcconnell's wife mitch mcconnell's wife she's got some clout who worked in the bush administration in the cabinet she's the transportation secretary he's he's interfering he's tweeting he you look at the what he is doing he's undermining the investigation uh by uh, uh, he's not in the investigation but the court rulings where his lawyers are arguing that this isn't a muslim ban well he was mad jeff what sessions watered down the language right but then he goes out and tweets that it's a ban twitter is going to undo him and so yes it it sean spicer is right it is what makes him special because it is direct access it is what got him elected but at the same time you're not a candidate anymore and i don't think that he has fully understood that yet and by the the tweets undermine his people's ability to go out and further his agenda his actions are the ones he's like having that boss we've all had that boss where it's just like dude I know what I'm doing. Just let get out of my way and let me do my job. Yeah, you know. And but unfortunately, this is the president of the United States. Like you look at the State Department. Our next topic. I think this might be a good time to transition if we're done on Comey. Yeah. If, if you said everything that you. Well, I mean, there there is. I mean, the president responded, and you know, his response, the RNC's response, is that you know it's vindication for what he's been saying all along. He never pressured anybody, and he was never the subject of investigation. But the media, the media, the media. Now, so. If you look at what he tweeted about guitar, uh, <laughs> Cutter, Cutter, uh, I mean, some say Cutter, guitar is, you know, it's how Cutter's a nice people, ship. I've Cutter, yeah, it's a great ship. Qatar, <laughs> uh, Qatar is in a uh, shitload of trouble, as they as the, is the technical term. And so, uh, Donald Trump goes to Saudi Arabia, mm-hmm. and he makes nice with uh, you know the Saudi Arabians. Gives them a nice weapons deal. A couple days after he leaves. Largest weapons deal in the history of the United States. Right. To Saudi Arabia, where how many of the 9-11 terrorists were from Saudi Arabia? 28 to 30. Yeah, damn near all. <laughs> right. Yeah. A couple Moroccans. Uh, right. They are they're, uh, huge funders of terrorism. Um, and that's the thing. is, it's, it, You are in a difficult situation because so their new prince, Salman, is, is a, a modern Western... Um, individual and he's he's very he is not someone I, I would be shocked if he was someone that wouldn't crack down on the support 
of uh, the rogue princes funding ISIS and those types of organizations, radical Sunni organizations. But he is also in a situation where he needs the arms in order to stop the, you know, Iran is growing and Iran's influence is growing in the region. That's why you have the uh, Huethi or Huethani rebels in Yemen that overthrew the government. And so they're actively, you know, fighting a real, real war campaign in right. Yemen to reinstall the former leader. And then Iran is uh, the only thing that Qatar did wrong is that they have not disavowed Iran so and have still conducted trade with them. Let's back up. So uh, get back on the timeline. So Donald Trump goes there. Well, the the what is it? The Gulf Coast consortium or uh, it's like yeah. this group of of libya egypt. it's the sunni opec states right it's libya egypt it's saudi arabia it's yemen uh, united arab emirates and bahrain and then on the saudi if you think of saudi arabia down in the bottom right is oman which i didn't even know was a com a country until yeah. uh this all happened uh and then uh king of oman qatar is like on the on the pinky side of the hand. Right on the water. <laughs> right on the water. But one of our Beach largest mi uh, U.S. military bases right. in Oman. 10,000 Ameri 10, American troops, and it's right across from uh, the Strait of Hormuz from uh, Iran. Uh, Iran. And this is the largest GDP uh, per capita income in the world. Yeah, they're in the top nine in per capita in 52 period. So yeah. they, have a GD, they have a sovereign wealth fund with $335 billion in it. Their government is the one that produces Al Jazeera. Yep, and that's so, what it's based out of. So you remember if you listened to the show report in the feed back in the day when Al Jazeera came to America, Qatar was basically saying, we'll throw as much money as we have to at America. We want to get in there. They have the third largest um, natural gas field in the world. Right. And, and so they've been exploring for the last five to seven years whether or not they were going to build a competing pipeline with the Russians through Syria, which is why they supported regime change in Syria, because they are a, a country that – so only 12 percent of their population are actual Qatar uh, – uh, for cutter natives right 88 percent are foreign workers it's it is the most populous the the largest group the largest ethnicity in qatar is indian yep is indian then qatari then uh arabs weren't even on the list no no um and so it it is uh a, an incredibly wealthy nation doha is their capital where al right. jazeera was at and they have uh, they have helped America out of a lot of jams. So in, it's in, a very it's it's a very westernized area. Right? Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, the, the Great Britain was in there until they gave them their independence in the sixties. Yeah, right. until yeah, right you after know, Sykes, like, they they use English as businesses. If you're a Westerner, you want to go to the UAE or or Qatar. Right. It, so when Sykes Picot was drawn up, um, the French had Libya, Syria, um, most of the more of the more Shia states, except for the British had Iran, obviously. Right. And this is something that goes all the way back to then, is that the British had the influence there, and they were under their direction, and so that's why you have the Indi uh, the British school system and westernized influence. Hmm. So you have uh, this, and, and it's amazing, it's a very small country, but Tiny. It, it has a ton of oil and natural gas. Oh yeah, it's got third largest, but the thing is, they hadn't gone into production, because Russia is the natural gas pipeline to Europe. So when right. Russia decides, they can shut off the natural gas and freeze out Europe in the winter. Right. That's always been their leverage, and they've, why, why they've always not wanted a competing pipeline through Syria, and why they prop up Assad. Right. So but if you go back to the Olympics, um, the, key, or the head of... Uh, Cutter actually threatened, had a prince threaten um, Vladimir Putin that he was going to have issues with Sunni radicals Always a good if, idea. If, if he kept propping up Assad. Right. And so that's when they were more allied with Sunni, Sunni radicals in uh, the Sunni states. Right. As they realized that, this, that Russia wasn't going to back out and the United States wasn't going to pursue regime, regime change, that's when they decided to more, form more of an alliance with Iran. Because right. they saw Iran as the the basic like geopolitics has completely changed because the majority of oil and natural gas in the Middle East is now under Shia land rather than Sunni. Right. And that's why the Shia, the Shia or uh, Sunni countries are really not liking um, Sunni countries being Libya, Saudi Arabia, Libya, Egypt. Uh, um, Egypt, and then United Arab Emirates, Bahrain. Even like so, t United Arab Emirates made it a crime today. If you if a journal uh, press outlet published something sympathetic towards Qatar and like the food shortages that they it's punishable by a fifteen thousand dollar crime and a year in prison wow anything just sympathetic in the press so the uh the other part of this is is that 
Qatar is a major funder of Hamas and a major funder of the Muslim Brotherhood. Allegedly. And, allegedly, but they are. <laughs> Everybody kind of knows it. And, and so, just like Saudi Arabia is a ma the primary financier of ISIS. Right. And so you have... Um, which and is, the 9-11 bomb, you know... Which is hilarious that Hasn't Trump is so... Yet. Yes, Trump is so anti-ISIS and we're basically giving weapons to the people that mainly support ISIS. Right. You know, it's the nature of businesses. It, you know, you understand that... Um, there is no you, if you if you go after the Saudis, is you're going to have rogue acts like happening in Britain. Right. It's better for America if they drive Ram trucks instead of Toyotas. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like ISIS. Right. <laughs> so, so they're major funders of terrorism. Which Donald Trump went to Saudi Arabia and uh, came back with the impression that Qatar is just they're bad guys. They're real bad over there. They're but terrible, we're refusing to really guys. take a side. We're our not. State Department, our ambassador came out today and talked about the reforms they'd made. Of course. And how what an excellent job they've done of leadership under this government. Yeah. but Because Donald, we have our base yeah. there. Donald Trump undermined all of that in a tweet. Yes. I mean, he. I, I don't. I don't have. Harry's queuing it up over here. So good to see. Uh, I'm gonna like do the X. I'm done. I'm not doing that. So good to see the Saudi Arabia visit with the king and 50 countries already paying off. They said they would take a hard line on funding, extremism, extremism, and all references from pointing to Qatar. Perhaps this will be the beginning of the end of horror of terrorism. So he is so eager to satisfy his ego and proclaim a win for his presidency because he's so under attack in his mind over the Russian stuff that he's now undermining a country that houses 10,000 American troops. It's absolutely is, critical to their, to it's their the only right. access. It is where CENTCOM is. Yeah. You've, heard of, you've heard of CENTCOM in the last 15 J years. I have Mattis quarters. was the head of, head of CENTCOM right. in the last administration. It is our main forward base into Iraq and Afghanistan. Libya, Syria, uh, that All is our access This point. is our safe location. Right. This yeah. Is, yeah. And so you'd think that he would understand that and understand that this is a strategic ally that needs to, you know, maybe not kiss their ass, but just keep your mouth shut, Donald. You know what I mean? Like, well, you got to remember too. Like, so they, it, it, there isn't a good way to do it, and so good cop, bad cop, almost is the right strategy because they, the what's driving all this is they had sit on the world's third largest, like, uh, liquefied natural gas, their largest export. It's what funds everything. They've also haven't even tapped their largest uh, natural gas field. Sure. Mm -hmm. They conducted five to seven year study with the best consultants, and then that's when it'll be another five to seven years is when it'll be operational. And they decided to go ahead and do it. This kills oil uh, or a natural gas prices uh, for Saudi Arabia, which is going to ultimately become their number one because oil demand is slowly dropping. You know, peak oils turned out to be a fraudulent thing, right. but natural gas demand is projected to skyrocket. Right. And so they're going to sell to China. They're going to try to enter the global market, which will kill the prices for Libya, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, um, any any Sunni-led regime. And that is how they buy their complicit, like the complicity of the citizens, is they subsidize all food and oil. Right. So that they can live a lifestyle that is, you know, fairly decent without any employment opportunities and heavily repressed. But they are able to maintain um, doing so through these subsidies. That's what caused the Arab Spring is when we did um, quantitative easing, all their currencies were pegged to ours. So by tripling the money supply, none of the citizens could afford to eat or drive anymore. Right. And so there was mass unrest. Yeah. And so you, you walk a really fine line. Their decision to enter the free market and provide natural gas undermines every authoritarian Sunni regime in the region. Yeah, and they were major funders of the Muslim, of the Arab Spring, which all of those countries hold against them. Because they wanted Assad toppled so they could build a pipeline through Syria exactly. and compete with Russia to sell natural gas. And right. so you think about Egypt, where they funded mo uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and the unrest there. I mean, the Muslim Brotherhood took over the country and, right. and it became uh, an Islamic extremist state. So right. Well, now it's propped up by... Um, CC, the right. the guy that went to the U.S. War College that we picked in the uh, overthrow. Mm -hmm. So we went from ultimately one American propped up dictator to another, right? <laughs> and like the, the thing was, they were betting that you know democracy democracy would spread under Morsi, uh, or what was his name? Was he the one that won the election democratically and then implemented Sharia law? Uh, Mohammed Morsi or Brun 
Uh-huh. No, it wasn't the Western it guy, was, was it? Uh, the, Peter Francis no. Dracy. Peter Francis, the, the bankruptcy yeah. attorney. Yeah. He is in a shocking yeah. upset. In the, yeah. No, but he ended up. The um, there, whoever yeah, the military w- took him out because he, they couldn't agree on anything, but I can't remember his name. Yeah, yeah I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you know who I'm talking about. That, mm-hmm. The guy that was democratically elected that's now sitting in jail, that, and then we, had, we propped up the general to take over. That's who they backed because that would allow them more influence in the region to build this pipeline. Sure. Because no bank right now, uh, the major financiers of these pipelines, you need huge consortiums of money to build these through multi countries. Mm-hmm. The risk is so high, they all backed out. And so, mm-hmm. luckily, though, Cutter's so rich, um, they. The, people were expecting a food uh, food crisis. There were pictures of all of the, the uh, supermarkets being empty uh, just last, you know, at the day after it was announced because but, they thought it was going to be starvation. And that turned out to actually to be a fake news story. Really, really. Well, the main the main food truck entrance. I mean, the the main entrances for food are on the land entrances from Saudi Arabia into Qatar, and they import ninety percent of their food. Right. So it, it's important that they have uh, active borders. Well, so then the Qatari Airways, the only airline, they actually the way they're situated, they have almost no airspace. So because this entire group of Arab countries have now banned their Qatari Airways from being able to go into any of the airspace they need to make the international flights or even the flights into other countries, now is grounded. Hmm. They literally cannot they fly. They can't get out over, the, over they can't, the sea? They cannot get out over the sea because that is controlled by um, uh, Yemen. Really? Mm-hmm. Even all the way up around into the Strait of Hormuz? They can't no. leave their country. Right now, the Qatari Airways cannot leave their country, and it, it's tiny. But why? Well, does, let's see why them start does, shooting down passenger planes. But yeah. Ye- Yemen, yeah. Yemen is way down on on the thumb part of Saudi Arabia. Why are they controlling the airways up by the by the pinky part? It was divvied up uh, a long time ago. The actual who has the air rights. I really do appreciate that Spangled uses the, his <laughs> hand like what you do for Michigan. Yeah, that's right. For right. the right. Middle East. Yeah. It's for the Middle East. You turn the mitten upside down. <laughs> well, listen. We this are, is the Persian Gulf. We need the to, thumb is Detroit or the UAE, yeah. depending <laughs> upon which, which hand you're using. It, it, if you're a listener in a God. car and you can't. Google map this like I did furiously the other night when Greg proposed this as a topic. Well, I mean, it, it's then, major. <laughs> then you need then you need the hand. Everybody <laughs> gets that. You know, you've got Saudi Arabia and the thumb is where uh, what's the place with the rock that they all worship? Uh, Medina. Ma- Medina. And Ma- that's that's all. 71 Mecca. in Ohio. Medina's Medina is where Muhammad was born. Right. Mecca is where he is buried inside of the black cube. Right. Mecca is over by the thumb. And then up at the top by your uh, index finger, you got Egypt. Yeah, you got Egypt, Morocco's at the very top. What's the middle finger? The The middle finger would be Libya, Morocco. No, 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 that's Africa. That's on the left hand. The horn. Right. (laughs) I'm talking about Saudi Arabia. Oh, okay, yeah. So you have Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq. You know, just the the little skin tag part. Yeah. Skin tag part. (laughs) That's what what, uh, Saudi Arabia's always looked like, the skin tag on the map. (laughs) And they're they're, they're really struggling. Right underneath the fingernail, right? Right. (laughs) A big part of this is they are really, really struggling to maintain control of the provinces that aren't all that loyal to the crown yeah you know so in the southeast in qatar or it's saudi arabia saudi arabia okay where because they still have you know even though they're about 75 percent sunni they still have um 25 percent shia who all of the oil and natural gas that's the land that it's under and so c- going into all this you have isis who's really felt the squeeze because now saudi arabia had an out to disavow them because of Qatar's alleged, you know, financing of extremist organizations, and the American people don't understand the difference between Sunni and Shia. They just think all Muslims are the same, and so that's why today in the Iranian par- or, uh, Iranian parliament, ISIS sent in jihadists in uh, suicide vests dressed as women with guns and killed twelve sitting congressmen. They walked in with suicide vests and blew them up, and they're Nuts. the Saudis are going to continue covertly uh, uh, creating this kind of turmoil as blowback against any of the Shia regimes. Mm. Mm. I remember when that was coming on. That was like just kind of rough to even like to read about. Yeah, like they like went in dressed as women in burqas and then uh, you know pulled a suicide vest and took out twelve congressmen. Yep. Cat. Yes. Anything to add? Is this our wrap up? No. Oh. <laughs> Do you have anything about? You've just been uh, quiet, cat. Yeah. I honestly have been playing with this like purple silly putty you stuff. Shared it, cat. I've had to See. talk about Middle cat. Eastern politics over here instead of playing with silly putty. See, you don't know anything stuck about here. Ge- geo uh, geopolitical chess. Yes. Forty chess. No, sorry. Harry's cat. cat. Harry's playing woman. weatherman over here. He's look. I'm all I'm supposed to do is answer the door, get drinks, like wash the dishes. Look pretty on the Instagram. Look nice on the Instagram. 
You're our aesthetic. I'm the aesthetic. Like, I don't have a brain. I don't know anything about pot. No, cat, cat, cat goes. Listen, I am libertarian. I don't know as much policy stuff as you guys. I'll just be the comedy relief. <laughs> I was like, okay, you're in. No, I agree. <laughs> Qatar with, should with, buy ev- the, all the, the suicide bombing. Are you on the side of the president or on the side of the she, State Department? No, she was pro-suicide bombing. <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. She, right, yeah. I, I didn't hear her condemn women. it. No. You're with us or against us. This is the axis of evil. I'm tired I'm of your you tweets undermining dear leader, Kat. <laughs> I, I know that we're darn near three hours at this point, but we yeah. have, I don't no, know no, that no. we have even touched, uh, touched the London Bridge deal. Uh, it's falling down? I love Fergie. <laughs> How much that's all longer I to, I to, make sure to be at this place? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, that's th- some th- of us th- have to go back to Muncie. That's an extension of like the Islamic State, which is just gr- radically getting more desperate because of their financing being cut off, and so they're actually they're picking the wrong fight right I have now. No and idea fil- what you're talking about. The Islamic I- State has been. Uh, They've decided to just have lone wolf attacks with knives. ISIS, right? right. So ISIS though it has people all over, and so like the London attacks. Um, this is a guy that went to on a on a visit to Morocco. He was married, white wife in Britain. Comes back from Morocco, radicalized. All of a sudden, makes her start wearing a burqa, and then goes and stabs up uh, Ariana Grande. No, that was the blown up. And then the guy who drove a truck into the London Bridge. Yep. And so these are called upon by the Islamic State. And then you had a guy at Notre Dame uh, Notre Dame Cathedral yesterday show up with knives and and something a hammer yeah hammer. Yeah. hammers and yeah. then they you know they logan clarked him took him out yep. um i thought the thing about the ariana grande concert was like they didn't know yet they were calling it like a tragic incident instead of a terrorist attack tra- tragic tragic just like cologne tragic right right oh god <laughs> but yeah so there's this is increasingly what's happening but isis is now so squeezed on their oil resources and they have no ability they're actually moving all of their cash out of their uh their actual territory because they're lo- and they're having to go through uh, buy like prepaid credit cards yeah. or debit cards. That's how they're getting their since uh, international finance laws like in order to yeah. track terrorist funding and money laundering are so advanced now mm-hmm. that they're having to like literally go to like Spring One fina- like those <laughs> Springfield Financial or like yeah. the place where you and if you don't have credit way. you can go and get auto loans. <laughs> yeah, like and then they're having to get uh, start open electronic stores and go buy a whole bunch of prepaid debit and credit cards to get their money out. They're being financed by Wood Forest Bank. Down it, 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 honestly, that's what's going yeah. on. That's the kind of organizations they're going to, and it's, so their only place no. now where they're not being pursued radically or like really. Um, with mili- U.S. military and then European NATO military intervention and pursuit is in the Philippines, yeah. which is absolutely batshit insane because that's where they make all their money from the drugs, from mm-hmm. the drug trade, mm-hmm. you know, from the poppy fields of Afghanistan is that mm-hmm. they get their heroin out of the Philippines. And they have President Duarte, who <laughs> one of his campaign videos is like throwing throwing an Islamic or a, a drug ping- kingpin out of the helicopter and like jokes about it. <laughs> like he's literally Scarface. Yeah. As the president, and it's because the drug trade has crippled their country yep. and has taken over, and they have mass drug problems. So they elected the former mayor that is just an absolute madman. Oh, God. Makes Trump look like the most civilized guy on the planet. And he is backed by the Chinese, but he is also now saying that he welcomes ISIS oh, because God. he can't wait to eliminate him. <laughs> and they've issued like a bounty on his head, and he he goes out of the presidential palace without any security <laughs> in a um i want to say it wasn't an ak but it was another on uh, he hit mp5 it was MP5. an mp5 yeah and like it says how he can't wait to take them on and eradicate them like dogs yep. and so i that that's isis's next you know because people don't realize indonesia and the philippines are like about 80 percent muslim and mm-hmm. that's where they've been mm-hmm. operating out of and uh, that's going to be the next attack but my god if you think vladimir putin and the mob are bad this guy's like Tony Montana, yeah. loaded up on coke, like f- flying out, of, leaning out of a helicopter, like Sarah Palin hunting, you know, moose. It's like uh, Jim, <laughs> Jim, Jimmy Mad Dog made us the other day. Was in an interview. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. And, and somebody goes, "What keeps you up at night?" Nothing. I keep other people up at night. Wasn't that the best answer you've ever heard? <laughs> My nips got so hard. <laughs> I did. I about spontaneously combusted into a bald eagle. It was the most patriotic I've ever felt. 
<laughs> All right, yeah. so final. Give us the final analysis on the the Qatar situation. From a libertarian perspective, it really we should be supporting their entrance into the global marketplace. You know, we should like it that there is going to be a new competitor to Russia. It undermines Russia's influence by offering a new competitor to Europe to buy natural gas. It, uh, they are incredibly wealthy, and we conduct a lot of trade for as small as they are uh, for selling American products into Qatar, and. It's one of those. The pre, we're actually doing it okay. Like we're selling to the Saudis, we're selling to Qatar. We're we need to work on opening up Iran, mm-hmm. and we need to extricate ourselves from the Middle Eastern dilemma through trade. The only problem is, as always, Israel, because the only thing that unites Sunni and Shias are the Jews and their hatred for them. <laughs> so as long as the where Israel lays low and it just turns into a Muslim battle, we should continue funding both sides. But we should also. Iran is who we should have ultimately support because they're going to win anyway in the long run because they are going to be on top of the most natural gas. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think that this, um, I think it illustrates kind of, uh, I think the Trump administration will illustrate libertarian foreign policy and, well, we can't just not lead the world. The chaos will ensue. Well, chaos has ensued with us leading the world, and now that we're uh, now that you know, chaos is the norm, right? Uh, I, I felt Obama took a much. Uh, uh, he stepped back from the Bush doctrine that America must lead and America must intervene intervene in other countries, and Obama took a step back from that, and Donald Trump is an even further step back from that. He's he is outright playing both sides and not hiding it. And, and, well, yeah. he, it's you're just which I am like that's ballsy yeah. as shit. In, but when yeah. you're the world's largest last superpower, you can do it. In, yeah, in incompetence he, or intergalactic chess, it does not matter to me. We're we're barely involved in world affairs. It's a straight yo Jimbo. What <laughs> it is? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, Yo Jimbo is a uh, Japanese uh, uh, tale of a, or a movie. You could watch really cool movie about this like assassin who's really really good at his job, and he mm-hmm. played both gangs in yeah. one town. So it's he played both he's of the, them. Again. He's yeah. like uh, Nicholas Cage in Lord of War, where yeah. he'll sell. You know, he's selling to everybody, but mm-hmm. whatever room he's in, that's whose side he's on. Harry yep. just went full Satoshi. He did. You could watch the Coronation Bruce Willis Ball. version of the movie Last Man Standing. <laughs> With uh, Bruce Willis, I love that TV show. No, Just no, no, that's Tim Allen. Trump. That's Tim Allen. That's a Tim Allen TV show. Yeah, it is. I, was I said say. Bruce Willis, Last Man Standing. That's the movie with Bruce Willis and uh, Christopher Walken. It's based off of the Japanese show um, Yo Jimbo. Yeah, but, but, they, I, yeah, I think but it's a straight Yo Jimbo movie. Yeah. People, this is the thing: is like it's it's everyone's so critical that he's going out and outright speaking the the polar opposite of what Secretary Tillerson's saying his State Department appointee, what the ambassador to Qatar is saying, and selling funds to Saudi Arabia, as well as being the primary ex- or, uh, import provider of food, and then, well, eventually, now it'll be food, and then we also buy a ton of their natural gas. And that's what we would want as a libertarian. We want to not pick sides and just conduct trade with whatever regime it is. The reality, though, is that if Israel ever gets involved, we're going to pick whoever they don't want. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Which is really just a shut up. But yeah, it looks stupid. It looks amateurish. It is amateurish. But if it we're going to talk about like what a libertarian policy would be, it would be sell to both sides. And I think you're yeah. going you're going to find that the world is not going to come to an end. We're not going to slip into World War Three just because America is not that America is starting to be more non-interventionist under this administration, mostly due to incompetence. But we'll partly, take it. We'll take yeah. it. <laughs> Well, I mean that undermines confidence in government. That's right. that's the best libertarian marketing, you know, yeah. uh, promotional material we could have. I, we've already bombed a number of countries since he took over. I don't know how non-interventionist you want to pretend that he yeah. is. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> but well, uh, in comparison to Barack Obama, he's hugely non. Oh, he's yeah. way behind the pace. But I mean, <laughs> the Obama he's administration like, wanted out, to. Re- we're out of the Paris Accords, Qatar, gutter, whatever your name is. Fuck off. Unless you want to buy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Then I'll come and touch your rock. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, right. I, I mean, honestly, like if it, would price. you is the right libertarian thing to just not sell to anybody? Right. Correct, yeah. It's a piece for a cheap price. It's a bargain. And if, if it ends up with us not having a military base in the Middle East anymore, the right I'm all libertarian for it. thing isn't the government being in the middle of the transactions. You let your private companies make these sales. They are, yeah. but the, you know the government has to approve them for right now. Yeah. But I mean, we can't just overnight take away the State Department's approval of selling weapons. Yeah. Eh, do we need a State Department? No, we don't. Yep. That's why they cut their funding by uh, next this calendar year. They took away forty three percent of the State Department's funding. Secretary Tillerson committed to a forty three percent cut of their budget. Nice. Which is everything we should want. 
I'm with it. Yeah. All right. I'm down for it. Oh, yeah. All right, final thoughts for this episode. Let's start wrapping up. Uh, little Duck, Clabby, Clabby and Abinus. <laughs> Cl- oh. Chloe, Cat. Yikes. What's your name? <laughs> uh, something like that. No, uh, I didn't really know much about this situation before, so I feel enlightened. Do you? I feel mm-hmm. much smarter. At least you know how to draw it on your hand. What? Yeah. Oh, right. No, yeah, yeah. the glove thing, yeah. yeah. Or the Use mitt. your left hand, turn it over. It's very mm-hmm. important. If I know so much now. If Creeper Paint it brown. <laughs> what? Paint it brown. <laughs> oh, no. For the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Very racist. <laughs> yeah. Creeper, yeah, Creeperitarians are real. Uh, Creeperitarians are real. You experienced it up yeah. front. I experienced it. And um, it made you want to put a burka but on. But you're stronger mm-hmm. for it. You're coming back to the next I'm one. I'm stronger. I'm here. Because you were very borderline whether or not you are going to attend. Yeah, I did not know if I was going to attend. Now I'm for sure coming again, and I'm bringing all of my friends. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it was a lot of fun. We're all going to uh, pile in the fusion and make the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the fusion for uh, softball finals. No, yes. but... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's been enlightening. I like the po- like the podcasts where the topics I don't know much about because I feel like I'm learning a lot that I can bring back to my college campus. And well, next one will be liberals. on the banks of the White River or whatever pageant you get involved in. Right, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Miss Muncie, perfect. N- now, uh, if creepers uh, creepertarians <laughs> want to follow you, where can they do that at? Follow me on all forms of social media at Cat Anagnos. Um, yeah, please do not send me any pictures of yourself exposed. I sent um, you a dick. Please, yeah. <laughs> dick pic, please respond. <laughs> PLZ respond. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks again. It's been fun. All right. Harry. I think Qatar should buy the last remaining Concords that are still around and just say, catch my uh, sonic booms. <laughs> <laughs> suck my suck, suck, suck my sonic boom, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and just like, boom, just blow out the glass of their city. It's like, they'll be too busy trying to repair it than trying to launch missiles on the Concord. <laughs> I don't know but, uh, if that's a brilliant idea or crazy. <laughs> Funny how close those two are. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a huge, massive mess. Uh, the Middle East is still messed up. It will always be messed up. But I think keeping both sides pointing guns at each other, it really does seem like that. I'm going to make an awful, uh, worse, uh, sci- another sci-fi reference back to Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, when Quark was trying to talk about how to, or the Ferengis, basically, um, space libertarians uh, <laughs> we're talking about how you could keep you could get peace for a bargain by just selling weapons to both sides because right now no one has an advantage and as long as you make sure no one has an advantage they'll always point guns at each other because the moment one of them gets hurt the other one's got an advantage so no one's willing to make a first move peace uh, out of bargain also congratulations on New Hampshire where the Liberty LARPers got their internet John point. Sununu yeah. the governor who mm-hmm. was if you remember him, he was the attack dog for the Romney campaign. They trotted out all over the press with the mustache, really old and grumpy. And uh, he's signed uh, legislation to protect cyber uh, or uh, cryptocurrency from yep. uh, government regula- or, um Yep, regulation up in, in New Hampshire. Yep. Yeah. Yep, thanks to Darrell W. Perry and the uh, Liberty Lobby. Yeah, I'll tell you Liberty what, man. Like, you guys... I've never Kicking seen a butt. governor sign a bill to protect you Liberty LARPers internet points. <laughs> you know, that's your that's how you guys exchange goods digitally. There yeah. was a pot wasn't there a pot thing signed in New Hampshire too? Uh, getting close yeah, to get the uh, marijuana, marijuana li- yeah, actually no, that did get passed. Uh, it was, uh, that happened right when um, Gunther was being born. The uh, you have to get pot gone through uh, on um, New Hampshire. That went through. I, I heard that Which on the Free Coast Free Cast. I listened to an episode of that uh, on the Roger Paxton's uh, network, but mm-hmm. I don't live in the Free Coast, so it didn't mean anything to me. But uh, <laughs> congratulations to Roger Paxton and all our friends in the Free State Project for all their hard work on advancing liberty. We mm-hmm. call you Liberty LARPers with love. Uh, Jeremiah Morrill? Uh, I'm going to plug, uh, first of all, y'all better get the Middle East in order before... Uh, the November 26th Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. I don't want that to be canceled at the <laughs> F1 Championship. So uh, that let's not, not let's not let that get messed up. Okay? Right. Y'all be non individualist enough. But uh, trust me, Europe don't drop any like, bombs listen, on the don't race. Track, fuck up our right? race. We've had enough yeah. of you people and in your squabbles. Let shout us get out this to Ed done. Jones, the guy that should have been the Indy uh, 500 Rookie of the Year, who's yes. the uh, Englishman. But he's actually from uh, from the UAE, so he's the, uh, the uh, UAE IndyCar driver. It God really, bless colonialism. It really weirded me out that there was a UAE driver <laughs> named Ed Jones. Ed Jones, yes. He could have yeah. been from Cincinnati. Did I talk to this guy when I called in to the call center about my technical <laughs> issue? Yeah. <laughs> this is a lady Hello. from Mumbai. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ed Jones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, the Boss Hog Liberty Podcast. Appreciate uh, the support we've gotten from Dear Leader and the uh, the, the Wall Network. 
Uh, I think we're growing faster than Wall did in the beginning, which is oh, only only because of the the tremendous support of uh, of this network and the listeners and coming over. Uh, so w- once again, if you're uh, you're listening here, Dakota is my Greg. I uh, I try to carry the show, but literally, uh, yeah, yeah, he's literally my he's baby Greg. Looks just like him. He's my son. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, give that a listen. Uh, Tanner Purdue's on there from time to time. Definitely We've had some do. Folks it's excellent. From, uh, I love it. From the Ball State newspaper, we have had a city councilman or a county councilman on who's going to be a regular with our show. So, uh, all kinds of interesting stuff over there. It's uh, it's probably not as policy focused as uh, as some of uh, what you come here for. Wall. It's retail politics, like the Boss Hog. But uh, yeah, it's it's about uh, the interaction of uh, how how our county government works and the local. We do dig into a little bit more of the LP stuff and state and actual party politics. You guys are more focused. That interests you guys more. Yeah, absolutely. Like you guys are much more on the ground doing the you know hard work. Yeah, it's it's definitely a. Uh, it, it, it's a way for us to have uh, social connection. We are the talk of the uh, the county courthouse, which is fantastic oh, yeah. down there in uh, in Newcastle, Indiana. It's uh, it's kind of like the uh, the local talk radio station now, <laughs> uh, which has been fun. Uh, so yeah, uh, jump on Facebook, Boss Hog Liberty Podcast. Like us on there. You can message us. Follow myself, Dakota, and uh, Tanner. Tanner, <laughs> if uh, if he remembers to reply, it's uh, Tanner Purdue. We're and, engaged. Oh, or is that who you're engaged? Yeah, to we currently? got engaged at the party. Carry on, sorry. Very nice. He's been sliding in DMs. I'm a cook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently eating this hamburger while staring Jeremiah in the eyes to establish dominance. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is only my ninth episode of The Big Show. Really? We're libertarians. I've recorded ten Boss Hog Liberty and nine. This is my ninth episode. Of, we have uh, to get of Jared past, past Bittner. Oh, yeah. Well, we That's know it's a long thing. drive for you. so It's a commute. It, yeah. Well, okay. I have appeared on two or three different podcasts that you will never air. Because we record them at the pool. They parties. were terrible, and they no longer exist. Now that people listen to the deleted. courthouse, do you want us to put them out? Right. Oh yes. Yeah. You you were dropping hard R's. <laughs> <laughs> Had Super R's. <laughs> Super no, I guess R's. we're not going to nominate Jeremiah for diversity position. <laughs> uh, I'm down with struggle here. Um, what was the other thing? Uh, the other thing that happened this week? There were lots. There was lots, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the uh, testimony tomorrow. But I think it'll be way more pomp and circumstance than anything we'll get out of it. Um, I just if he sticks to what that was, and if the way the questions were answered by uh, Coates and Rogers, as far as did you feel any undue pressure put upon you, um, or do you feel that you were directly asked to cease any type of investigation, I would be shocked. I just yeah. don't see him doing that because I don't think I think that it's one of those things where if I say you know I really hope that you would stop investigating someone or you you know could see your way to he's a good guy. I would be stunned because also in the testimony or in the thing he released, he talks about how he likes Flynn because he worked with him. Right. And he is a, that's why he said he is a good guy. Right. And I just don't think that based on all the, you know, the Russian, the revelation of the leaked report with the leaker, um, you know, that is so benign. The intrusion was so benign and it was not able to actually hack the election. I just don't see unless there's actual funds that they can prove tied to someone in a, an appointed position, that the president will actually um, ever be impeached. There's just not verifiable evidence. Man, I'll tell you, uh, when you're done, I'll go. No, that, that would be it. That would All be right. my read on the situation. Shiny yeah. object over here. I'm looking at Spengel's bookcase. The only book that I've read that's on your bookcase is Dirty Jokes and Beer by Drew Carey. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of libertarian books on there, Jerry. You haven't read... It's Drew Carey. He's a great, great libertarian author. Uh, so the funny thing about Dirty Jokes and Beer by Drew Carey... I was in sixth or seventh grade when that book came out, and I was the biggest Drew Carey fan. If you look on behind the fuck ISIS bumper sticker, there's a book, a little yellow book called Homebrewed, and it was a biography of Drew Carey. Drew Carey, when I was a kid, was one of my heroes. I love Drew Carey. I, uh, I just, I memorized all of his stand up. I watched the Drew Carey show religiously. I loved him. I still do. I think he's he's such a great guy, and he is a great supporter of libertarianism. Um, and, and I just identified a lot with him and, and uh, really liked him from the very beginning. And I loved that book, Dirty Jokes and Beer, as did uh, the uh, No Shirt, No Shirt, No Shirt, No Shoes, No Problem book by Jeff Foxworthy. Uh, when I was a kid, those were my two favorite books that I read all the time along with All Over But the Shoutin' by Rick Bragg, which is my favorite book of all time. Um, but that book came out the day that we had a field trip to the Circle Center Mall downtown 
And I, uh, I mean, I must have been 10 or 12, somewhere around there. I remember. At the mall. Yeah, uh, from the middle school. Yeah, and so yeah. We, we went to, it was seventh grade, because that's where I met Brandon Van Hook, one of my best friends. And uh, so I go to the Walden Books, I buy my copy of Dirty Jokes and Beer, and I stuff it into my shirt pocket, into my coat, so the teachers wouldn't see it, because they were cracking down that day on all the kids who had all this South Park paraphernalia which mm-hmm. w- had just come out and was just outrageous. People couldn't believe how out- offensive this TV show was. Uh, and America, 1997, cat. Right. Yeah. I was born. I was alive. <laughs> yeah, she was one years old. Um, and so three months old. And so I I stuffed this in. I didn't want this book to get confiscated. I just I just spent twenty three dollars on this. And so I'm sitting in the back of the bus. I sneak out my book, and there is a, and I'm thumbing through it, and there is a whole chapter on dick jokes. Dick jokes. The whole chapter of dick jokes, and I started telling dick jokes. It's like songs at the back of the for bus. comedians. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have to understand, like I met one of my best friends, somebody who was in my wedding that I loved, named Brandon, who uh, that day. But we didn't really become friends for a few more years till like tenth grade. I had no friends in 7th and 8th grade. I had no friends in 8th grade especially. I was completely isolated. Nobody liked me. And so the dirty jokes and beer, that day when I told dick jokes on the bus and people talked to me and they laughed, it was a revelation because it was a way for people to talk to me and like me. And so I started memorizing jokes. And I told a few during 8th grade. Uh, and that down there somewhere is the Urkel joke book, Steve Urkel's joke book. Well, that's why I didn't like you because you only told racist jokes. Right. <laughs> so, so you kept saying women be shopping. Right. And they couldn't culturally identify. So anytime I could get anybody to talk to me in eighth grade, uh, I would tell them jokes and they'd laugh. And so between eighth and ninth grade, I memorized joke books. And to the point that when I got to freshman year, I had the joke of the day and people would come up to me. Girls would come up to me and ask me what the joke of the day was. You know, uh, all the classic jokes like, you know, why, you know, the the more people you sleep with, the better car you get in heaven. Well, there goes your wife in a Cadillac. Those kind of jokes. Um, (laughs) Also, some very offensive cross-dressers blow guy jokes. Like very, uh, but they killed. And by the end of you season, were an edge lord, right? Very much so. <laughs> an angsty so edge lord. I, I became, did teachers come up to you? Did teachers start to come up to Spangle for the, the yes, joke of the day? Absolutely. We had cool teachers. Yeah, and so I became. I was homeschooled. I wouldn't know anything about it. So <laughs> it gave me an in with people. I it taught me how to interact with people, and so jokes, telling jokes, and and because I was always just a comedy nerd, I used to memorize every Bill Cosby record. Mm. Have a drink, cat. I would memorize every <laughs> George Carlin record. There I, she got it. I, I For just, some reason, she's delayed on the response tonight. I never collected baseball cards. I collected comedy tapes, and I memorized them all. And so I was ready once I hit ninth grade. And so I, uh, I, I credit that book specifically uh, with turning me into the extrovert that I am today and giving me friends because I I ended up being one of the more I wasn't a popular kid by senior year but I was definitely well liked by everybody. So, I well, mean Well, then you I, I didn't see you cuz you joined the church I went to right as I was he, he, I was losing faith in God right when Spangle found it. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Jer- Coincidence, opened, I think. Uh, Jer opened right up to the dick joke. I just wanted to see if there was going to be uh be anything in here uh highlighted. My dick <laughs> is so big that my dick has a dick. Uh read number 85, Harry. What, 85? Yeah, <laughs> only Harry can really read these. My dick is so big, Las Vegas casinos fly it into town for free. <laughs> and when you're okay. in seventh grade, that is the funniest <laughs> shit you ever heard. So I, I'm shocked that you like you listened to like the old Bill Cosby records. I used to listen oh, yeah. to those growing up. Oh, Do you yeah. know what the joke of the day was in seventh grade for me? What? Uh, I called Justin Bieber gay, and he hit me with his purse. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good seventh grade joke. Yeah. I know, right? So if you're a young kid out there, you're 10 years old, and you're listening to this podcast, uh, learn jokes. And, and I'll tell you what, I'm eight, I was eight years old when I wanted to go into radio and comedy, and I idolized the Bob and Tom show. And one of my life's uh, dreams has been fulfilled working for that show during the day. I love uh, being there. And so you just stick with it, and you, uh, you do what you want to do, and you can make it in life. Trust me. You'll grind it out and start a podcast of your own. Absolutely. <laughs> my dick has better credit than I do. 
<laughs> so, well, no, you think about it. So, what seventh grader is listening to this? So my career has been <laughs> politics, media, talk radio, comedy, and it all converges here at We Are Libertarians, and this is this is what I'm going to do forever. So, so uh, with that, I just want to say thank you guys so much for supporting We Are Libertarians. Uh, it is a, a fulfillment of my dream. I know that, you know, this is my social circle. These are my friends. And we're so glad to get together and hang out uh, for several hours on a weeknight and uh, bring this to you. And when you guys share it, when you guys donate to us, when you guys write a nice review on iTunes, when you just send us a night, nice note, it means the world to us because we put a lot of work into this. A lot of research goes into this. Uh, a lot of houses are torn up for this, uh, and we do it so you can get something out of it. And we just thank you guys so much for uh, joining us and for sharing this podcast and for being a part of what we're building here at We Are Libertarians, especially 812 Farms and Martin Armory for their support. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode of We Are Libertarians. This is Chris Bangle. And as always, we're saying we promise to do... Want to do a redo? Better next time. And as always, we promise... To do better next time. You'd think after 211 episodes. It's better when you get it wrong. I know.